Okay, it is 6.02. We are officially calling this meeting into order. If you don't mind, let's start, as we typically do, with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a moment of silence as we consider those who have gone before us. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm excited uh, to have our new village clerk here. She has been on the job for a few days now, and she is coming back each day, which is a good sign. Uh, but this is Clarissa Mango, who is our right. officially new village clerk. She's learning the ropes tonight. Um, and she is going to do roll call for us, please. Yep, so, um, let's see, um, Atler, or mm -hmm. Walter, here, okay. Uh, Robert Decker is not here. He is not here. Uh, O'Malley. Here. Okay. Uh, Sauer. Here. Schutig. Here. Yep. And, uh, Bobby Ryan is not here either. Correct. We get everybody? Yes, you. Do we get you? I am here, and uh, also, for the record, uh, village attorney uh, Elena Finnan is here for okay. us. Shut Shoot it. We'll get it. It's fine. All right. What is it? So, uh, first off, uh, we had um, a series of public hearings. The first public hearing that we're actually announcing is already open. We opened it last month uh, regarding Local Law A, a proposed uh, local law establishing a vacant and abandoned uh, building registry. We opened it last month and had a scheduling snafu. We noticed it and then switched the meeting and forgot to adjust the notice. So we left it open uh, for this meeting as well. Uh, additionally, and Elena, I have to do I do a motion or do we just open a public hearing? I can't. I never remember that. You can just open. It. Okay. So we're also having a public hearing for proposed local law B of 2023. This is a proposal of law disallowing junk vehicles in the village of Hoosick Falls under certain circumstances. And also a public hearing regarding a proposed local law C of 2023, a proposed local law establishing a property maintenance code for the village of Hoosick Falls. As with anything in village government, we have to have the law drafted up. Um, it goes through our committee and our attorney. We introduce it and set a public hearing for a later meeting. We have the public hearing and it's up to the board if they want to table it, uh, approve it, uh, via resolution or you know wh whatever the board wants to decide. So at this point, I'd like to open up the floor. Would anyone like to speak specifically to uh, any of these three proposed laws? Do I everybody talk at once? All right. <laughs> Trustees, do you want to add anything with the discussion we've already had? Well, I know somebody that might be happy with getting rid of some junk cars. <laughs> Well, I know, uh, I know we have a couple trustees who are very bummed not to be here to see these get across the finish line. So we will remain, uh, we'll leave the public hearings open for a bit as we proceed through the rest of the meeting, and I'll give everyone another chance in case someone comes in with a burning question about these public hearings. All right, so um, I have a few mayor updates, uh, including a couple extra ones that aren't here. Trustees, I had sent an email through about the NICOM webinars that we uh, can purchase at a much, much discounted rate. Um, and trustees, I had sent an email, and I think um, someone added, a Doug, you had added one uh, that you wanted to have uh, us pick up as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this down, and if anybody wants to seize one that they think that they, they want to make sure is, is, is in the list of things I'm going to order, just highlight it. Uh, just pass that down. And whatever is highlighted, I'll make sure it matches up against the previous list, and that way you guys can have a little bit of extra time to look through that and make some decisions on that. Number two, I wanted to talk about the levy. Some of us know it as the Army Corps of Engineers levy or the flood wall or um, about three-tenths of a mile uh, of a part of a portion, I'm sorry, six-tenths of a mile, three-fifths of a mile of the Greenway path uh, near the uh, Oak Mitsui First Street site. Um, the village is in contract with Army Corps and DEC to maintain it. Uh, it's something that we realized hadn't been done to the Army Corps' uh, likings. Uh, DEC brought it to our attention uh, via the Army Corps. Uh, Kenny got his guys and Jerry McAuliffe, and they did an amazing job on clearing it. And I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys uh, what this looks like. 
I wish we had the before picture. It would just all, be all overgrown. Kenny, what do those giant valves do and stuff on the? Flood? They let they they regulate the water. So if like if we were to have a flood and like it started flooding like in the downtown, we could open them up and supposedly it would let the water back up. Oh. Okay. So this stretch from the from the railroad down is about thirty five hundred feet. I think we figured out. Yeah. Um, and you guys did an outstanding job of getting this uh, cleared out and done. How long do you think it took you guys and total, Jerry? Total probably, probably two weeks. It was uh, it was uh, incredible. Is that the same video we just saw? Nope. No. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to just basically say these guys did immaculate work, uh, and it was a lot of work, and. Um, I want to thank them for that. When Army Corps is back in August, we're going to have another round of uh, just making sure we're in good shape there and uh, we should be in, in uh, um, continuing to maintain this. Um, and we had a couple DEC employees with us and it was just a very interesting walk on a very warm day. So you can see it goes up quite a ways that way, but I wanted to thank Kenny and his crew for uh, the work there. Can contract with Jerry to do the Part. So it's Thanks. a yearly thing, and um, it hasn't been done in the last couple of years, and nobody's reached out to Jerry to do it, so every year we hire Jerry to do it. I have that pencil. In the last couple of years, mm -hmm. so we reach out to do it. So, no, so I reached out to him this year, he said, do you still want to do it? And he said, yeah, and he got busy with things, and so we just, you know, I had my guys go down and, you know, we all went together and knocked it up quick. So. Great. But he's going to maintain it now. Yep. That's great. And I know a lot of it was COVID kind of threw a yeah. hand grenade in all of our normal procedures, and that was one of the things that got lost, and also with Jerry's guys. But, yeah, so um, I wanted to follow up with something we brought up last week. I did do some digging on the excavator, and we know 100% now that the excavator was unrelated to the Woodsburg Bio program. I sent you uh, that contract. I don't know if you've had a second. You probably haven't because it was only a couple days ago. So the next step for us is if we... Uh, don't have any language in the contracts barring us from selling it, we should be able to move forward and sell it. So that's something we'll be discussing, I guess, more over email. And if the board requires action, we'll either do it in August or have a special meeting if we need to. Um, uh, I had a resident uh, reach out and bring up the desire to have a stop sign installed. Uh, this would be at the base of Cumming Street for people turning right onto Mechanic Street uh, at the bottom of the hill. So when you're coming down Cumming Street here, and you're about to turn right to Mechanic Street, they would like to consider, the board consider putting a stop sign just on this side. Mm -hmm. I think, Kenny, correct me if I'm wrong, there's one over here yep. for traffic coming this way. Yep. Um, I don't know if there's one for traffic coming this way. Yes. There that's is? Just, that's just the back entrance to okay. the solution. Um, so if we, if the board thought that putting a stop sign right here was a good idea, we would just have to have a lane and draw up a, a local law that would add a stop sign there. Why, why would we want a stop sign there? There's a uh, coming down that hill on Cumming Street. People tend to zip around the corner. I don't know how good of a spot, a vision spot it is, but that was just what the resident had a concern yeah. about. I, I just my concern with that is that before everybody wants to stop, I'd like to have ten of them on my street because people go 100 miles an hour, as you know, on my yeah. street, you know. Uh, but you know, realistically, I think we need to do a little more study on that to see if it's actually necessary. Uh, that's that's my opinion. The biggest issue on Cumming Street really is the speeding that the cars come off from. West Tuzik and they mm. fly down that road. Mm -hmm. Actually, a resident just posted something on Facebook just recently about the speeding cars. And uh, one thing I'd like to talk to the chief about is not just radar enforcement on our main roads like River, River Road, um, High Street. Church Street, High Street, uh, Main Street, is to actually go up into some of the streets like uh, Barton Avenue, Rogers Avenue, mm -hmm. Abbott Street, and have radar Ball checks. Street. Also, Ball Street too is another one where people go the back way to Bennington, and they, they the speed is terrible on those roads. I think we need to do radar checks in those areas, not just on our main street. So maybe you can take a look at that, and I can maybe go over a ride around with you someday and show you some of these streets. The golf course road probably is another where you uh, get a lot of traffic. I, I would add on Abbott Street, people don't expect to stop signs. So. <laughs> 
Well, that was a. It's not by a quarter. It's that was a. Oh, with the door thing about it. Yeah. That was that's a, like oh, four things coming all from different. That's a, was an instance where they did put up stop signs to slow traffic down. So slow it down. Yeah, yeah. your pencil yeah. for a second. Mm -hmm. so. so the the one issue on the end of coming street is when there's no there's no you can't see around this corner. So you can put a stop sign up there. You still can't see if anything's coming or not. So and people, people cut that corner when they turn onto it. Yeah, yeah. I mean that house is right there. So I mean you'd have to literally have that sign out. At the point before, you know. <laughs> do, do you need to make it a no, four-way four stop and it's work? Oh, or an yeah. all-way stop? That's another possibility. Is an all-way stop. If, three if three people directions. People can't see an all-way stop. Everybody has to stop and work. But for us in the village, if we want to make a stop sign change, it's required to go through local law to do that. So I just want to throw that out. It sounds like Dan is, is the no initially, but maybe look into it more. I, I, my, my concern is that Listen, nobody wants stop signs unless they're on their street. That that's mm -hmm. the, that's the way humans work, right? I mean, so I just don't want to. What's that? <laughs> we could. It's easier um, to get a stop sign, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Duck have open. At least they still have a headline. I'd like to go look at it though myself. All right, Kevin. Take a little look at it. That's where I think we're going to have to investigate it first. I, I, mean, okay. I, I think speed's more of an issue than the stop sign is on that. Okay. Unless we have a lot of reports of accidents. I, w I would definitely get back to this person, though, and just say sure. that we're, we're not just so she knows we're not ignoring Sure, I would definitely do that. Uh, another update, uh, Jackson Street Playground. I was able to meet with uh, Trustee Alter, who's taking the lead on this, and uh, Kenny, and look over some things at the Jackson Street Playground. Um, are you going to talk about this later in your report? Yeah, I can do that. Or All I can right. do it now. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Yeah, we'll do it later. It's fine. I just want to mention this is one of the things we're working on, and we're kind of making it a priority to seek out uh, some funding in the near future to see what we can do, maybe reach out. I actually spoke with Dean Foster a little bit, and we, yep. we can go on that later. But that's just something on the radar that we're looking into, and that we'll talk more about that later. Um, the water treatment plant dehumidification uh Jim is still in the process of getting all of the quotes that we were looking for. Initially, we had wanted to get the same exact dehumidification system that was installed in the GAP building. And that was not done by the village. That was done by the companies as per DEC's you know, requirements, whatever. And our thought was, hey, let's just repeat that. But it turns out that that's a $90,000 job and it won't be ready for about a year. So we're kind of going back to the drawing board and seeing if there are any other options. Uh, we were hoping to have some quotes ready tonight, but we don't have all those yet. One possibility that we do have that he just sent to us was the possibility of renting a dehumidifier um, in the meantime to, to, or I think it was three dehumidifiers, right? Yeah. To handle the size of the room. Yeah. Um, I'll, if I have some free moments while we're going through the meeting, I'll, it, that last quote just came in like an hour or two ago. So, um, And then um, regarding the electric um, work, we're still waiting to get our second and third quote on um, the electric panel work so that we can move forward with that project. So those are the water updates I wanted to give quick. Uh, Number seven, the glorious documentation for the remedial investigation work plan for the McCaffrey Street site is available. And we get a binder like this about once every two to three months because of the various super funds projects or various investigations going on. So uh, this one arrived in June. I think it arrived just after our last meeting. But these are things that the village keeps. The Cheney Library also has. They're part of the things that we uh, have to archive and make available. So. I'm just going to pass that down if you want to spend some time looking through tons of numbers and data. Help yourself. It's right there. And we can put it out there if anyone wants to look at it later. Uh, I had a couple extra ones. I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, I have been talking about trying to get a new website built via WordPress. And I found an opportunity to take an online class at Hudson Valley for $129 that would literally focus on creating a website in WordPress. I've already gotten a start on that. Oh, let me circle it. Um, but I was wondering if that is something that you guys would be okay with doing, and if there's Elena, I didn't even I didn't mean to drop this right now, but I just kept forgetting to send it. Um, is it something where I could do it and get reimbursed because I'm doing it for the village and doing the village website or the project? How does that work? Yeah, it's reimbursable. Okay, so I'm just passing that down to show you what that is, um, and I would be uh, very interested in doing that because then I could use the class to both 
make sure I have all the knowledge and skills I need to make the WordPress site, and I could be that would be part of the project of the class. So, could you also? I'm in support of doing it, but also like the village clerk have other people back up be able to. Yes, it that is the reason I want to switch it to WordPress instead of just being coding specific. Yeah. That means she gets a login, other people can get a login, put up posts, adjust things, and it's much much easier. It's just setting up the back end so that on the front end it's easy for us to do that. That's that's my goal. I think the way the current website looks is what that Rick did years ago is very good. It's just not been maintained. Yeah, I went through uh, a couple days ago and just added, just adjusted a couple old things. Like I changed Clarissa, I changed uh, Chief Culinary in there, and just a few other and things. And then we do add things on there, it gets lost because it goes down the chute and yes. nobody sees it again. And I, I've already kind of mapped out a preliminary structure, and I know that, like, as an example, if I want to make a, uh, you know, the page for code enforcement, Mark's going to say, I want to have this document, this document, this document, this document available right on the front so we can have all those archived there. It really needs to be a resource where people who want to find information can get it, and it just hasn't been quite yet because it's a lot of work uh, to do that. But if it's done in WordPress, it shouldn't be a big deal anymore. Yeah, the other end of that... It's not just informational, but I know in the New York Forum we've looked at other communities and they use it as a promotional of their community. We don't have anything that we don't promote the community. But if, it, it's just, if, here's the categories. I know you're busy and you don't have a lot of extra free time. Should we be looking at perhaps hiring somebody to do that rather than you do it? Because uh, I had always been. Um, it's always been a struggle for me to find the time to do it. It's always summertime is the best time to do it, which is why I was hoping to be able to get it done over the next like six or seven weeks. Um, I've done done a lot of legwork, but it's also if I can do it and then turn over to someone, it saves the village up a bunch of money instead of bringing in someone for several thousand dollars. But I'm fine either way. If if you guys are like you're doing too much and I'd rather have a professional, I'm that's fine. Just by looking at different websites of different towns, it grabs your attention if you have a really well done mm -hmm. website. And if it's not, then people just click it off and go away. Yes. Yeah. Not, not, nothing personal about it. Oh, no, no, no. I, I designed a, the webpage for the school many moons ago. It was probably 14 years ago, and that was the kind of thing you had to think about is what do you see on the top of the page? What's going to bring people there? How does the organization work? And there's a lot of good examples out there on really well-organized and easy-to-use and read websites, and there's also a lot of bad ones. So. There has to be a search bar. Right? There's yeah. nothing that makes me crazier than not having a search bar. WordPress will, will include a search bar. Yeah. So we can come back to that at the end, but I just want to mention that. But you, you need to know soon to be able to take the course. Yes, I would, I'm, I'm, I would be able to, yeah, if you want to just discuss it and decide it now, I would be It's 129 very, bucks, right? 129 bucks. I think for the Go cost, ahead. it can't hurt us. <laughs> yeah, okay. If we hired somebody, that'd be one hour from there. Yep. Time. And honestly, if, you, if, if, I, haven't, that, right? yeah. if I haven't gotten if it done that, by September, yeah, yeah. we know I'm not going to have time because that's when the school year starts mm -hmm. up. If you put in one hour, all right, so even. two hours. Doug, are you making that motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All abstain because I'm the one, but it's, I, I guess it doesn't matter if I abstain. I, I, I would have to abstain. Great, I did right. All right, so it passes. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, I wanted to mention the woods work. I forgot to put this on the agenda, but um, getting ready for the storm um, and then watching some of the storm unfold uh, in communities in New York State and Vermont was surreal. It, it brought up a lot of memories. Um, I know that we were in touch. I was getting everyone's information out because, you know, back when it was uh, 2017, it was Neil Stoll and Bob Ash, and now it's Kenny. And, Chief Culinary, but uh, we had everybody, everything ready to go. County knew who all the contacts were. We didn't really have any issues here, which was great. I'm sure there were, I don't want to speak on like there were basin problems, because there were definitely basin problems, but we got about two and a half inches, uh, but uh, I asked Kenny to go do a little bit of um, video work just to see how things were. This is uh, early in the morning. 10, 11, 8 a.m. Uh, this was the retention ponds that they added in where if the flow got so high it would backflow into here for extra storage. Where is that? Is that the one on Johnson Hill? That's off of, um, um, no. Easy Street and, um, July 10th. Well, see. Here's, oh, at the top, okay. That's here's some Easy Street. Street. Yep. Oh, okay. The first one was off of Richmond. I'm sorry. At the top of the country. Easy Street. It's the same pond, it's just different views on the other side. Yep. And then... Woods Brook, down by Spring Street, 
So that, at that point, it's gone through all of the Hall Street area that flooded and, and, and through to the end, and no issues. No. What's Brook? Spring Street? Off the bridge to Bobby Decker's house? And that is the last concrete chute at the end that goes through John, uh, the John Street area. Yep. Uh, and then this was in the afternoon. We've spent some time at about 1.30. Hasn't really changed much. Hasn't gotten much rain today. And then this is the same view from up above. We've spent some time at approximately 1.30 in Easy Street. Not much has changed. It's been less than two inches of rain total since then. So I, I had probably 10 people from all various parts of life reach out to me to say, how is Hoosick Falls doing? Because <laughs> we're known for flooding issues. Um, and it was really nice to see that the work that we did and the work that was going on way before I entered the picture back with Mayor Borge, um, doing a lot of the groundwork and, and trying to get people to respond and not getting the response, which allowed us to get the response when the flood happened. Really nice to see that, and I know that um, Rick Harlan from the Times Union was chatting with me yesterday and again today. He's probably going to do a story on it because we were able to figure out what the problem was on a small scale, get funding from the state to do two things, and it paid off big. So it was nice to see that for us, and also extremely hard to know what some of those communities are going through for the next weeks and months. We get screwed by FEMA for not getting a dime out of it. Oh, I mentioned that. I mentioned that. FEMA's explanation was it was a Series of event of events instead of one event, so it was a multiple storms instead of one front. So it was, yeah, it was garbage. But anyway, so those are just my quick updates. I wanted to um, make sure we kind of knew about what was going on. Do you guys have any questions on those? Or all right, moving on. Uh, people to be heard section. Uh, as we do at every meeting, if you would like to speak on anything or ask any questions, you have the floor. You have to begin with your first, uh, your full name and your street address, and you want to share or speak what you want to discuss. Can I get an idea of how many people would like to ask questions or address the board? One, one, one. Mary Ann, take it away. Okay. My name is Mary Ann Zuckelbauer. I'm president of Music Rising, which is why I'm here. Um, and I'm here to talk about the uh, retreating of the downtown area, particularly uh, Main Street and upper class, or lower class. <laughs> um, so we have um, requested funding from the Reynolds Foundation. Um, we're seeking permission to put approximately six sycamores on Main and Classic uh, this winter. We're working with um, the Suttons, uh, Connor Sutton specifically. Nice. Um, we have gone through the research with the trees and the sycamores are long lived, um, lower maintenance than some of the other maples. But they also don't have surface roots, so it's not a problem putting them in you know, a section of sidewalk and not having them disrupt the rest of the sidewalk. Um, fall planting is best on this, um, and the locations, most are locations where trees previously existed. So the two right offhand, and you can walk Main Street that whole curve and you'll see, but um, the two in particular uh, are in front of the post office, one on each corner of what is their block. And you can see the small, odd-sized um, pieces, sidewalk that was poured to kind of fill in space. And there's a couple other uh, situations like that um, going down Main Street. And then on the other side of Classic, I don't believe we have that situation with sidewalk. So we would, once we pinpoint where we exactly we would like them to go, we would be asking that a section of sidewalk be removed. When you say in class, we're about to exactly, are you talking in front of the woodblock I mean, as you make that turn right there? Or? Yeah, so kind of to the left of where Doug's oil it was. Was, okay, yeah, okay. Between, so like, by the empty lot next to the Saluzzo's and block. And to the right of the entrance <clears throat> to uh, uh, Bistro Saluzzo. Okay, so I 
we'd have to check with the state on that because that's what we collect too. Yeah. And we don't maintain them. We're, we're, I mean, we don't have the right to just rip up their sidewalks. So yeah. We have to, we have to check. Well, if we can't rip yeah. them up, then they should be, be the ones repairing them. Right, because we yeah. call them out yeah. and they refuse to repair. Yep. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Marianne, <laughs> where are we talking? So where are we? Okay, so you got to go to Main. Up to Main Street? Yes. Ah, no. I mean, how about you? All right. So if you go to the post office. Nice bureau. You bet. <laughs> um, yeah, it might even be right where that puddle is. Um, because the, the piece of sidewalk is kind right of... Right here? Yeah, right there. So that's one. Yep. The other one I'm guessing is... On the right. left side. Of the same situation, left side. Probably right here. Yep. Okay. And then... Classic Street, you said? Yep. Where in Classic? Um, where Doug's Oil used to be. So the Bistro Block? Street A. Yeah. Yep. Nope, not Bistro. So right to the left of the Doug's Oil building? Uh, for lack of a better Right around term, here is what you're thinking? Yeah. Clo right, probably closer to the building. Or either closer to, to the white building or closer, but I mean, obviously, we can't get near the culvert. Okay. And you can play in the, uh, some of the curb cuts that are all disagreed. Yeah, some of them are broken. Yeah. Most. Um, and then to the right of Bistro 42. Up here somewhere? Yeah. That is going to be trickier, but yes. because that Before the light bulb, probably. Probably in this area right here? Yeah. Okay. The only thing there is, depending on what work is needed <clears throat> to eventually repair that sinking foundation and stuff, uh, you're not going to get, I mean, I, I hate to see you put a tree in. And, and then it they, well, they're going to have to pull, I, I, I mean, I'm not, no expert or engineer. Yeah, it's just a gaping hole under Yeah, I think there's going to be some yeah. serious. <laughs> and we got a bag of worms, you know? Right, right. <clears throat> All right, right, so you said six, right? Yep, and We're, then there's two more to be at. Wherever we decide, not we, wherever the village wants them to go to further shade Main Street. So the, the optics are, um, and um, I should have brought a picture, but they've been sheared numerous times, especially by Kevin, <laughs> of the, all of Main Street and Church Street being lined by elm trees. And you walked in complete shade through the village of Hoosick Falls um, historically. And so we're just, I mean, these, these will be large trees, um, which would be trimmed up. They get, you know, four or five stories high um, to shade downtown. It's a great choice, too. It's a resilient tree. I'm excited. Yeah, they're, they're like 150, 200 years old. It will definitely be beyond your lifetime on who has to worry about it. What about in front of the funeral home and going down? Trusco in the funeral home. Yeah, there are a couple trees there. There are, and actually right next to the, um, not to bring this up now, but right next to the village hall would be a perfect spot. Um, we would destroy any value to that solar unit. Um, and, yeah, but well, if we're yeah. not worried about there, that's right about where we'd like to put one on the sidewalk. <laughs> the what unit? Solar, solar, solar panels. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. They even hooked up? Isn't it just for decoration? <laughs> it is. I don't know. I think it is. Are any of them hooked up? I don't know. I saw the company looking at them. So, just they beyond are, the they hydrant. Up, yep. I, didn't, I thought that one was just for like advertising though. I think it's hooked up, but I'm, I would <laughs> no be okay if that got accidentally knocked over or something. I, you you know. could put it down the sewer plant. Who would, know, who would care? Yeah. There you go. Um, so I think um, from the standpoint of us moving on, I think it would make sense to have Kenny and a trustee or two work with Marianne to figure out the exact locations we're thinking of and then bring that to, back to the board for thoughts and approval. We can get this information out ahead of time with pictures of the board, so we can decide on it as a board. Does that sound? I don't mind doing it. You you want to plant them in the fall? In the yeah. Okay. So. Okay. How big a tree is? Well, I mean, so these, an answer tonight. the leaves have to come off 
has to be before the ground freezes, so probably we don't have tonight. That's no. Didn't answer tonight. So just as the tree goes dormant for the winter, basically, yeah. is optimum. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So if we made a decision in the August meeting, that would give time for us to prepare the location and, and get the trees ready because you'd be planting in the fall or you'd want to plant in the spring? No, fall. Fall, okay. So from the village standpoint, we just have to decide um, what is the extra upkeep that we may or may not be signing up for, um, how is it going to affect snow plow, things like that along the road or along the sidewalk. Um, just from an upkeep, I like the idea. I've always liked the look of those uh, those trees, and I think it adds um, really nice character to it. So I am generally in favor of this as a principle, and I love the idea. And I think we just need to circle back, come up with a plan, and make sure we understand the upkeep side of it, so that we have all the information to make our decision. Yeah, my, I mean, my only concern would be like the salt in the wintertime with the salt the tree. You know, are pretty sturdy, though. Right? Yeah, I mean. They're the maple family. I didn't know that. By the way, I contacted the state about the other trees that seem to be dying. Mm -hmm. okay. The state isn't using those trees in any of the projects anymore because they're getting too big for the spots. That's why a lot of the tops are all dying. Mm -hmm. So they had the arborists come up and take a look at it, and they said, well, you can either try feeding plant food or trimming the trees. And I said, we don't have the resources to trim the trees. It's the kind of tree that you don't really trim anyway. I mean, it has all these massive branches that go straight up. It's not like, I mean, if you went and looked, because I looked at it to see whether there was anything I could actually do about it, particularly the ones in front of Key Bank parking lot, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, there's, there's several. Actually, there's about, I counted about eight, and they came up and looked at them. Mm -hmm. They said, of course, just like the sidewalks, there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, the one in front of the key bank, the one of two in front of the key bank is really terrible looking. I mean, we could, I don't know what it takes to get the tree out of the hole, um, but we could we could definitely replace those. And key bank doesn't care, I've already talked to them about it. Yeah. Well, Amanda says she'll, she'll just, she'll work it out. Yeah. So, She's very good. do you want to take the lead on this? Yeah. Anybody yeah, else want to help out? But even for the visibility of the mirror, we spent a couple thousand dollars having that replaced, and now you can't even see the thing without the, the trees getting so on it. So, so maybe something, a smaller fruit tree or whatever they call them. That yeah, the only trouble, I think that's it, sorry. Um, the only trouble with smaller trees are is their people height and, um, and car height mm -hmm. or truck height. Um, and I, 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 the tree either needs to grow like the uh, ginkgos we put in on John Street. They grow tall, and they don't get very wide, um, at least until they're much, much bigger than they are now. Uh, so it's never going to grow into the buildings or, or be a problem that way. It, in, in that curve, the problem would be that the trucks, something ornamental would be, the trucks would just... Mm-hmm. Yep. Why not ginkgo trees all the way around? Um, they don't get big enough fast enough, so it will no. never shade Main Street in my lifetime. <laughs> do, you have a, do you know of any communities that have these types of trees you're thinking about? So, the reason Connor and I started talking about it, he went to his, for his honeymoon, he went to Italy last year. Mm -hmm. And I spent two weeks in Italy in uh, end of April. And their streets are lined by sycamores, enormous, giant, huge sycamores. And those cobblestone sidewalks, which are 2,000 years old, aren't disrupted by a root system at all. And so you're walking in Italy, and you're completely shaded the entire time. And um, it's fabulous. And, and, and I just said, oh, you know, why did I never think sycamores, you know? I've uh, seen them in Bosnia too. It's big, half the size of this width of this room. I'm dating from Austro-Hungarian times. They're enormous trees, and they're beautiful. They, yeah. they, they, they are. Okay. You can see them like they trim trees in Paris. What Napoleon? So Napoleon planted sycamores clear across Europe to shade his troops marching into battle, which it is amazing for uh, hmm. I thought for a leader actually. How big will the trees be when Connor puts them in? Um, they'll be two and a half inch trunks. 
Okay. So, yep. you guys work together on this over the next couple weeks. Yeah. Hopefully we can get a plan sort of on paper before August 1st so that we can have time to review it and move on it in the August meeting. Sure. Kevin, you want to help? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So, Dan, Kevin, Kenny, Marianne. How are they as far as leaves? Thank yeah, you. They're a real mess. Leaves are huge. Oh, okay. Because I will tell you the case. I'm sorry. Leaves are huge. Just apologize to my guys. Because I can tell you, anybody that's worked on the DPW that's come past my house in the fall knows about ginkgo leaves. And By the there. way, mm. they're brutal. Yeah. They stink. Oh, I get the berries. I got a female tree. Those should be males down they're there. All so males. They're, they're all males. They're all males. You're not going to get the berries the down there. The female ones are stinky. Mm -hmm. The By female the trees, you'll know when you walk past my house. There's no second guessing when it's berry season. Kevin? I sent a letter to our Congresswoman Stefanik about the post office, the condition of the property, both yeah. the maintenance and the condition of the building. A lot of ornamental pieces on top. And I think, Mark, you actually sent a letter at one point, didn't you? About the... Well, I got them cleaned up or something. And I've talked to several of the postmasters and the, the regional manager at one point, and they said they would fix it, and it's still... If you look at the front of the building in the upper left-hand mm -hmm. corner, mm -hmm. a lot of those ornamental pieces fell off and they, they're still sitting up on the roof according to the, the workers. And also, there's a lot of vegetation out in the back of the building. They cut that all down. Oh, they did? The one right up against the uh, parking lot? Okay. No, yeah, but I didn't talk to them the other day. There you go. <laughs> so, I haven't heard anything back yet, but hopefully we will. And okay. Did you talk to anybody at the post office? <laughs> uh, I have several times. Um, anyone else want to speak? Mary, does that, that was it, right? That's it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none. We are moving on. Um, reports. Do you want to yeah. close the public hearing? Um, I, we can do that now or later. It's fine. I'm fine with, with I don't it. Think anybody else is going to come make All right, so one more shot to uh, speak on the local laws, either uh, the three proposed laws. Do we need a motion to close all three or individually each one? Okay, I'm looking for a motion to close the public hearing on proposed law A of 2023, which is the vacant and abandoned building. Motion. Second. Right. Dan and Deb. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. I'm looking for a motion to close the public hearing on local law B, which is the is disallowing... Roll call on those? What's that? When we do the resolutions, we will. Yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, so looking for a motion to close public hearing on proposed local law B, uh, local law allowing, uh, disallowing junk vehicles in the village. Motion. Second. Th thank you, Dan. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, further discussion? All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Nays or abstentions? Carries. And looking for a uh, motion to close public hearing on local law C, which is the property maintenance code uh, proposed law. Dan? Need a second? Thank you, Deb. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? I'm thinking that carry? Yes. Great, thank you. All right. Okay, all three public hearings are closed. We have in the new business later our resolutions ready if the board wants to go to that. So. Did, did, oh, we didn't do. a couple of people say they wanted to speak? Or did you guys somebody change their mind? Nope, no one else wanted. I thought I thought so. All right. All right, so we are on to uh, the reports. We are going to start uh, with. Chief Culinary. Hello again. Hi. So I, um, he, uh, Tim just started a week and a half ago. Thank you. Um, he's got a lot to learn, so I said, don't worry, I'll do the police reports with Officer Davick and Officer Alexonis, as we have in the past. He also went above and beyond and included some stuff, so uh, if you want to speak about anything, you certainly can. If you guys want to ask any questions, you certainly can. All right, so the cost of service that I have is 175. That's reports that were generated. Um, <sighs> okay. Through SJS or our computer system. It doesn't necessarily mean you go on a bark and dog complaint and you tell the people to have their dog be quiet and you go off. <sighs> so that's why there's a discrepancy between the 346 calls compared to the 175 mm -hmm. reports actually taken. As far as the arrest go, um, there may have been 61 different charges, but 31 people were arrested. Okay. And that's um, misdemeanor and above. And the uh, violations in there for V&T was from a DWI arrest here and there and things like that. So that's, that's pretty much the discrepancies between the, uh, the reports. But 
overall, I think it's uh, we're doing pretty good. At some point, when the guys are off sick leave and all the recruits are all on, full, on a permanent basis, I went to uh, change the schedule up to have at least two guys per shift. And so we have full coverage. And there's a way you work it out that officers could have every other weekend off, which is important uh, when, you, when you're doing police work. So it, it might help out. I have other issues in here, too, um, in the department activity. As far as the guns go, I got a price for the guns from the uh, like American tactical system. Um, the quote is in here. It's $429.99 per weapon, and I would like 12 of them, which is over $5,000. However, he's still over $1,000 less than all the other dealers I dealt with. The lowest quote I got was $520, and that was for new guns, and it was from out of state, and they have to ship it here, and you have to get an FFL, which is a Federal Firearms License, that would be to... It's an additional charge that for each gun to process it and turn it over to the police department. So that was still pretty good. That's basically cost for a Sorry? clock. That's for a clock. That's basically cost. Right. I mean, that, it, that's, it a, that's a good price, guys. It, it is pretty much cost. Plus yeah. three magazines per per gun, um, and it will fit everybody else's holster, so we don't have to buy new holsters. Jim, you might, might want to mention too that uh, currently we only have three. Firearms that are shared by how yes, many guys? Three firearm per share, which is a liability issue right there. And I think it's cheaper to buy the guns for everybody and have their own weapon instead of trying to fight something in court if there's an officer involved shooting. So, Tim, you said you got three, three quotes minimum on these? For the firearms? Yes. Yeah, I did, but the other ones I didn't bother to print out because <laughs> they were out of state and they were much higher. Okay. Now, the vehicle that's at the Ford place in Greenwich, I looked over the cost. It's, it's quite a bit of money. The car is 10 years old. I don't know how many miles are on it. Um, one of the guys was saying that they got to get a battery every year because of the, uh, the mice chew up the wires or something like that. And $485 for a battery is outrageous. I called her and I asked her if it was a magic battery. <laughs> she said, no, we can go to advanced auto parts and they'll put it in there for, for nothing. You can buy a battery for less than $150. So it's up to you guys if you want to spend 5000 plus on a 10-year-old vehicle. Is this the white one? So I don't know how many miles we're on. I think it's the white sedan, right? It's the white it's one. The white white sedan. Sedan. You were using? You got, a, you got a three or black, right? No, so no, no. Or? This is um, the, the, one of the active police cars. It's the one that um, I think Officer Davik is typically used in. There's some other issues in here that I printed out. There's a couple you things wanna, in there that yeah, are you not... You may want to talk about that in executive session. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk um, about those things in executive. Oh, why are we still, are we sending the cars to Barbara? Are we sending them back to the dealers? Or we sometimes we use Barbara and Fricky, but sometimes Barbara and Fricky recommends a dealer. Oh, and that's okay. why I think this one went to the dealer, and the quote that came oh, back was really, really high. I so, think the transmission service or change from them is a little past their, a little over their um, skill level. Skill level, yeah. So. Um, we could, if we wanted to make a decision tonight on the handguns, um, we have three quotes. We know the quote that we want to go with. Um, Elena, could we use ARPA funds right, right now to decide to use these for the purchase of equipment for the police department? The other options we could look, and it will take a little bit of time to look into what the police budget has for equipment. Um, that just means it's going to take a little bit longer to get to that point. Um, I know we did order ammunition. I think that may have been right before you got here. Do you know when that's coming in? If there's ammunition there now. There's, okay. I think. So when they come in, they can go and schedule right. and do quality. Well, there's, there's practice ammunition and there's carry ammunition. The one I looked at today, um, one of our officers is going to the range to qualify. 
and she had some practice ammunition for her weapon, mm -hmm. handgun, and she needed practice ammunition for her qualification ammunition for her rifle. Okay. So she got that today, and um, I really don't know what else we have. We don't have any we do three rounds, but if it was ordered and not delivered yet, that's for the rifle. Fine. I don't know if it's uh, if it's on order or not. I have to check. Do you guys want to make a decision now or try to get this all figured out and wait a week or two, maybe have a special meeting to at the end of uh, this month to do it? In my own sense, from a liability perspective, I'd rather take care of it sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. It's crazy that we only have three guns for... It's one months. of those things that's technically probably okay, but on the other all other angles, it's like, oh. Well, four other guys purchased the Rome. Um, so and they get qualified on that. And they could qualify, and, and you can carry your own gun if you qualify with it. And they did. So, but sharing three guns, especially with the new people coming on, and the guys coming off sick leave, that's uh, that, that's that's not acceptable, sort of. Um, if if someone qualifies on their own gun, is there like a, a list of approved firearms? For that, is there, is there like a list of uh, firearms that are approved? Because as you know, there's a lot. There's a big difference in handguns. Some of them, some of these guys have hair triggers and everything else. Right. Well, Glock twenty twos, they're all for right. Caliber. They're no, all I mean their own. If they if they qualify on their own, right. would it be better to just have the department issue a Glock twenty two? Because that we know that the safeties, what the safeties are, and everything else, and it's that's just, a department it's the same weapon that they purchased. Oh, they are using they the same one. Okay, all right. Four Glock twenty two. Oh, okay, all right. So. so this would just give the village enough firearms, at least in the immediate, so that every officer has access to using a village one should they need to. If they don't want to use their own, they have that option. Plus, and then there's no sharing of concerns or anything like no that. There's no sharing concerns. No we may have a couple stuff. extra if have to someone has a lot of service. And then, um, like I said, everybody's got their own holster already. Okay. Sounds like a good um, idea to me. I'll make a move. Okay. So, because it's d d specific to ARPA fund, what's the motion we need to make to approve this purchase? The motion would be to approve the purchase for the 12 Glock 2240 caliber handguns, including three magazines per gun, at a cost not to exceed $5,159.88 with the usage of ARPA funds. With the usage costs. of ARPA funds. Okay, so who said they want to make that? Doug want to make that motion? Dan wanted to second that? Uh, any further discussion on this? All right. Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or opposed? All right. Carries. You have approval on that. I will bring up the other stuff in the executive. Okay. If there's any questions, you can let me know. Sure. And I, the, one of those things I, I will fill you in on, I'm trying to get in touch with Elaine to just get that last thing taken care of. It's okay. a weird... Just, it's just, it's an easy, it should be an easy thing. I don't know why it's taking so long, but yeah. Rob, yeah. should Tim, uh, Chief Culinary, join us in executive for a few minutes to discuss this, or is that not the way we... No, it, I mean, it could, but there's nothing we need to act oh, on. Oh, so okay, all right. And he can, if he's around later, he can certainly join us, and we can talk about that first. It's not It'll be about 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yo, I won't be here. I've been up since 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get all the dogs. I'm sorry? All the dogs, you have them all? Yeah, we got the last one yesterday oh. around uh, wow. uh, 2 o'clock. I had to leave work and go grab him and bring him up. So, wow. You were done? I had I five German Shepherds jump out my window. Oh, no. And they're all uh, going to be a year old at the end of the month. Oh, so oh, boy. They were running oh, all over the place. Oh, oh, my. That's why he has not been sleeping. <laughs> that I have not been sleeping. Plus, they were all up and a little crazy last night, so I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, any other questions for our new chief? All right, hearing none, I'm looking for a motion to approve the uh, police report. Second. Thank you. Uh, that was Doug and Deb. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Carry. Thank you, sir. Cool. Code enforcement report. Mark. Anything you want to highlight? I got nothing. We have um, one particular case that is coming up in new business. Um, and that is related to an unsafe structure. Do you guys want to do that right now with Mark here, or do you want to wait until later? Why not do it now? Yeah, I agree. Does that work for you guys? Yep. Okay.
then we're going to jump to a resolution that we have on the top of page three on the agenda, which I, of course, am realizing in this moment that I never opened to have up here. So bear with me one moment. Um, Can you find the, um, the building next to Mary Ann's? Is that going to come down? Do we know where, where are we? Is so that, that, that is what this is. Oh, okay. So um, just a, a little bit of a backstory here while I, I get this up. Uh, there. We have a local law from 2008 that addresses um, uh, unsafe structures and gives the village the authority to require the owner to take it down or if they do not uh, take it down, we take it down. I'm, I'm doing the very, very quick version of this. Um, we did this back in 2018 or 2019. We had three buildings. One was um, claimed by a fire, one was claimed by a flood, and one was very unsafe and that was... Um, that was how we went through this process last. Spring Street. Spring Street. The other day in the building where the car sits. Yep, and then uh, I remember the owner. It's the one by the Legion. That was the fire. Mulready. Mul that was the oh, property. Yeah. yeah, so we've been through this before. We've used the local law. Um, so this is the next step in the process. Uh, so this resolution, um, Elena got ready for us, and I think this is similar to the way we did this last time. Um, so if it's all right, I'm just gonna plow through this real quickly. This is a resolution pursuant to section five of Hoosick Falls Local Law Number One of 2008, determining that a building is unsafe and dangerous, ordering its demolition and removal, and directing that notice be served upon the owner. Um, and by the way, you guys have this in a hard copy of packets of resolutions. It's probably gonna be, um, I don't know, somewhere in the middle, I think. Um, this talks through the location, uh, which is 18 John Street. This is, in fact, the property next to uh, Mary Ann's Hoosier Provisions, actually physically connected in some ways to Hoosier Provisions, um, that we had a report done uh, back in 2018, 2019, the first report. Uh, yes. it, was a, it was a ways back, and it was determined that it either needed to be repaired or come down. Uh, many years went back, um, tried to get things taken care of, got the engineer to come back in. It was deemed unsafe. Did you the engineering report to this? Uh, I have it pulled up here. Yeah, you want, you want to see it? Well, just because I, I purposely just referred to the engineer's report because the engineer's report refers to his previous report. Yes. So, um, the engineer's report is right here. And he does, re he does refer to Ah, there it is. Uh, June 28th of 2018 is uh, when they did the inspection. And the uh, report was dated uh, July of 2018. So at the bottom of the report, the office recommends the immediate steps be taken to demolish the building from the engineering report. So, great. Even uh, though at that time there was a possibility that the building could be saved if the So, yeah. So has, has he paid for the last demolition? That was relevied to the county, and that is the county made us whole. So now, what we did have to do is we had to, I think, do a short-term ban to cover the cost of that, and then that got relevied from the county. But we have to just confirm with the county that that will go again. So, if he owns other property in the village, can you put a lien on his other property? That is an interesting question. Just give it time to be taking that one too. And he's obviously going to take care of his properties. Oh, he'll have a big pile of church. I know. Johnny Beck Church Street. You know all about it, huh? So, um, let me just go through the rest of this. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Village Board of Trustees of Village of Falls in regular session duly convened. Um, let's see how much this do I need to cover. Um, number one, Board of Trustees of the Village of Hoosick Falls does hereby find and determine as follows A, that the report of the Code Enforcement Officer, dated July 11, 2023. And the consulting engineer's report prepared by Cosco Associates, Associates dated um, May 30, 2023, find that the building located at the subject premises is unsafe and dangerous and in imminent danger of collapse and constitutes a threat to public safety as contemplated under Hoosick Falls Local Law 1 of 2008. Uh, that based on such reports, that the said structure located at 18 John Street, consisting of a two story wooden frame structure, et cetera, et cetera, it's unsafe, dangerous, and constitutes a hazard. To public safety is beyond any possible repair, restoration, or remediation. 
such that uh, said structure must be demolished and removed from the subject premises upon which they are situated. I'm just going to finish off this because I think it will help us all understand the process. Two, based on such findings and consideration thereof, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Music Falls does hereby order as follows, A, that the structure located at uh, 18 John Street with record owners of Jonathan R. Daniel and Susan R. Daniel shall be demolished or removed by the owner. <coughs> Excuse me. B, that a written notice of, of, of all above findings and order of this Village Board of Trustees in the form of two annex shall be served forthwith by the code enforcement officer on the owners of the said premises C, that demolition and removal of said structure from the subject premises upon which it's situated shall commence within 15 days after service of the said notice. D, a public hearing shall be uh, conducted by this village board of trustees on the 9th day of August 2023 at 6 p.m., which is the next regular meeting, um, or as soon thereafter as may be heard at the village of Who's It Falls Highway Garage, 7 Waterworks Road, Who's It Falls, New York, regarding such unsafe structure the report uh, reports issued in connection therewith and the order to demolish and remove the same. E, that in the event the said structure is not demolished and removed from the subject premises upon which it is located as herein ordered, this village board of trustees shall provide for and cause the said structure to be demolished and removed and cause the costs and expenses incurred in connection therewith to be assessed against the land upon which said structure is located as provided in section 5F of the Falls of the Law, number 1, 2008. So that is the process. Um, before we go into discussion, I need someone to officially offer the resolution and second it. I'll offer it. Thank you, Deb. I'll second it. Thank you, Dan. All right. Uh, discussion. Elena is, or Mark, is there anything else you want to summarize on this? Mm -hmm. So once this is done, we put it out for bid. For demolition. So if we, he doesn't demolish it himself. Ironically enough, we put this out for bid last meeting, forgetting that we had this process that we still needed to go through. So we've technically already given the authority to Mark to put it out for bid, but we're not at that point in the process yet. So that will be coming. But since we did the motion last meeting and since there's a, a, a specific time set in here where as soon as we as soon as it's time he can go for it and do it. So what point does he still have an opportunity to get his crap out of there? So, I would not recommend that he be able to go into the building. It's not a safe building. So, and the stuff that he needs to move is heavy. It's going to be, it's going to be uh, historically, the language in the contract is that the contractor who's doing the demolition takes the stuff. That's a very valuable thing to a lot of people like scrap and not really stuff. Like that. And it's sad, but there's some old stuff in there. I would never recommend you in there and be allowed to do it again. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Further discussion? Okay, this will be a roll call vote. Do you have the resolution on you? Uh, All right, because this is one where you have to write in all the answers and this becomes the official document of the record. Do you have a pen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last page. Uh, yeah, I jumped ahead on you. You did. <laughs> um, Is it four or five? This one. That's the last one. Okay. So, um, roll call vote, please. Oh, uh, Daniel Shudig? Yes. Shutting. Yeah. Yes. Shutting. Shutting. We'll get that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kevin O'Malley? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Deb Alter. Yeah. Uh, Decker's not here. Doug Sauer. Yep. And the mayor. I'm a yes. Yes. And then just put ABS for the uh, other folks who are absent. Okay. And it was offered, by the way, initially by Trustee Alter and seconded by Trustee Shutting. All right, so that officially uh, passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mary Ann. Um, I guess you figured out why I called you yesterday. I want to make sure you knew this was yeah, on the radar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if by chance uh, the village is the one who ends up taking this down, we'll definitely be in touch to make sure that whatever we can do to communicate. And, yeah. um, although I'm not uh, in a position to recommend people, I did hear you mention a name who's done good work in the village. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. And my house. Mary would be happy, but the Wyman's would be happier. Yeah, the local nice. wildlife may be a little bit upset. And the polar bear works together too. We'll be looking to climb down. So and the monitor thing is stuck. So sometimes she's hard to catch. So I'm going to be on the lookout. I see him sneaking into town. Let me know when you see him. Um, he goes to the post office occasionally. Yeah, so but he comes to the barber. He goes on that, that um, next to the firehouse that little alley that we were talking about yesterday. He just sneaks up. Yeah. Uh, okay. He dropped off but it won't be close to the attic building. But the nice thing is, by weird happenstance, we're taking care of the car problem, too, at the same time. So you could, uh, it's true. Post down Once the mom or she uh, owns the land. current residence. She still owns it. Yeah. So then we got that issue. Yep. 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 All right. Um, okay, so we're finishing up reports. Any other questions for Mark? Mark, thank you for your work on this. Looking for a motion to approve the code enforcement report. I move. Thank you, Doug. Second. Thank you, Deb. Uh, further questions for discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. Treasure report. Um, I can just summarize it's been crazy busy, and they are all relieved to have Clarissa uh, in the office helping out. Unless you guys have any questions about the treasure report, I will take a motion to approve the reports. I'll move. All right. I'll give that one to Doug. Danny seconding that? Yeah, sure. All right. All in favor of approving? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. Clerk, deputy clerk report. The last one submitted by Judy Vandekar because Clarissa will get to the next ones. Um, not a lot changed from the previous month except I think a couple. Um, There's one number that changed. Otherwise, it was all, all the same stuff. And they're working crazy on the property taxes and the, the, the water billing is going to be coming up in August. So we... Uh, can I ask a question about the water billing? Should should we put a notice in there since we have the mailing already, letting everyone know that we do the 50-50 sidewalk program? Because I've talked to a few people that had no idea the village pays for half of it. I had talked about well, trying to get a mailing together with a bunch of different items. Well, what does it come I mean, How does it work? I'm not saying. So we... I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, please, no we explain it to you. That's the point of this. I call, we call it 50-50. So we'll, we'll go over and pop the slab out, you know, the slabs or whatever, and then they hire a contractor to come in and form it all up and do all the work, and then we pay for the concrete. Which, so, it's, I mean, it's so we remove, we pay for material, and they pay for basically the they labor. Pay, they pay for labor, whatever. So we, it's a good deal. It, yeah, it, it is a good deal, deal. yeah. It's I mean, I, th I think we should put a notice in with the water bill since we're doing it anyway. Did you know or something, the village will remove old sidewalks and pay for the materials? So long as you hire your own contractor. And but pay they the have, it has to be, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, like they have to have insurance the contractor. It has to be with the. Yeah, you want to rep bill, you don't want to just hire. Oh, yeah, 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 well, that's, yeah, that, that would all be in the fine print, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Approved. Yeah, a, pr a contractor, a fully insured and approved contractor. There's a lot of communities have uh, newsletters they put out a couple times a year. And uh, I got some samples at one time from Brunswick and uh, the village of Castleton. Dig up again. And Can you send those to me? Because I'd, I'd like to get one out either with the billing or before the billing because there's a lot of things I think people should know about. These new local laws, um, I think it would be good to give them a heads up that, that there is a rate change coming that was approved in the last budget. Um, things like the 50-50 sidewalk program. There's a lot of things that I think would be nice. The transfer station hours, the village office hours, just so everyone's clear on all that stuff. Sometimes they, they put them in the libraries, they put them in the um, <coughs> town office, they put them in local businesses so people can pick them up. That way it saves on mailing costs rather than mail them all out. You can just uh, circulate them around town. That makes sense. And I think part of the reason... Yeah, online, yeah. Part of the reason we wanted to mail them with the bills uh, is because that's, that's already going out. So it's not an extra cost except for the printing. We have the folding machine, so it's not a big deal. Kenny, on the concrete, mm -hmm. some of the newer sidewalks are like are like ice when they're yeah. wet. <laughs> There's no is that? Um, yeah. I mean, you, you should generally we would do like a broom finish we call it on the on okay. the sidewalks, and that gives it a little bit of texture. Texture, yeah. Um, some some guys don't. We could make that a requirement. I mean, I we could put that in there. I would. Tell you. <laughs> broom finish with edging. Yep. With the edger. Yep. We can make that requirement. Is, is this 50-50 program like 
documented in some sort of policy or law, or has it just kind of been traditionally what we've done? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's what we've always done. It's legacy. It's not I think I saw in the law on one of the stacks that debt gave us all. All right, I'll look tonight. What's that? It's in your code? Yeah. It ought to be spec'd out so they're all done the same no matter yeah. what you're done, you know, by any contractor. Sounds like we got something for next month. As long as we're talking about concrete, <laughs> I've been talking to Mark and Kenny about curb cuts, and especially down in 2nd Ward and some up in 4th Ward where people have just taken over the sidewalks and drive over them and park their cars mm -hmm. without any kind of, they just take the sidewalk out and drive their cars or just drive over the sidewalk itself or park their cars on the sidewalk, which one is a police issue because you can't park on the sidewalks. And the other is just the aesthetics, and then people have to walk down the street, and all of a sudden the sidewalk's gone. So, I don't. Do you ever find any local laws that we have regarding curb cuts? I don't. I didn't see. I looked. Um, the only thing that I can really say is like we, the homeowners, own their sidewalks. Their are, sidewalks. are you? Are except you sure for, they except own? Except for you. <laughs> No, I know we know. I know the state owns it. But no, it's like my, stuff, yes. I mean, my, my understanding is with sidewalk, and it could be totally different here, but I just remember, I, I haven't lived here my entire life, is that you maintain the sidewalk, and when it's done, it's the property of the village. You're required to maintain it. Well, then, then why do they have to pay half when we replace it? Well, the same reason that you have to pay for... <laughs> Sounds like we have something else to look into. Well, we, have a, yeah. we also have a local law that says you have to maintain your sidewalk. Right. So... Yep. At your expense. At your expense, right. Right. Well, look at that. I was wondering what were our next local laws going to be. We're making a so, list. Um, <laughs> so I, I researched some different places. Some communities have the highway superintendent. Sorry, I keep stealing your pencil. Oh, that's okay. That. <laughs> and there's the town of Smithtown, wherever that is, and they have the highway superintendent do that. And there's, a, there's forms with uh, specs in there that has to be replaced. And also... A lot of places have specs for the actual driveway. They're going to put a driveway in. It has to be some kind of material, not just dig up the lawn and park the car. Right. And then they, there's another one for the village of Lancaster, which is also for the highway superintendent. And then the city of Schenectady has a curb cut permit, which is run by the engineering department, which we don't have. But maybe some of these things we can look at. We don't have one then. Come up with our own. Can you make sure Elena and Dan and yeah, Deb, copies of that. who else is yep. local law? Deb. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Make sure they get a copy of that so that we can start looking into local law and looking this so up. So when, when you say they delete the curb or put their own, they literally go out and demolish like the curb and like just... No, they take out the, the sidewalk and just... What, get out there with a sledgehammer and bust it up? Just on the driveway. Yeah. Oh, that's got it. There's got to be some way. And then there's two up in Fourth Ward where people are parking in their front yards, but their the back wheels are on the, the sidewalk, so they're legally parking on the sidewalk as well, blocking the sidewalk. Is it is it is the illegality of you parking park on a on, sidewalk a state law? On, you can't park on village sidewalks. It's a village law. It is. Oh, okay. It, there's got to be something unlawful about <laughs> going out with a sledgehammer and removing a sidewalk. Well, we will look into it. Sometimes it's improvement. That's true. That's true. We're we're so I mean this is all good stuff. So we we know where we're we're heading with the next local law, the next item we need to really dive into research and and, and revise sidewalks. Um, we're kind of all over the place with reports. So let's finish off. Any uh, clerk, deputy clerk, um, report questions? Otherwise, I'll take a motion to approve that. Motion. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you, Deb. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Carries. Howie report. Can of anything you want to highlight? No, just that we've been super busy trying to keep everything looking nice, you know, throughout. Park looks beautiful. Every time I've been there, the park looks beautiful. It's, it's stinking impressive. Any questions for Kenny? Looking for a motion. Thank you, Dan. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carrie, sewer report. Hey, and quick question, Kenny. How long had it been since that levee was cleaned up? I mean, we're talking like years, that year's worth of mess? It may have been pre-COVID. Yeah. Because I remember that the first time 
everything got screwed up with COVID, and I think that Jerry was having some problems getting people to help him with the work he was doing. Yeah. You know, they used to make you get out and clean the shoots up, too. Did you have to do that again, too? Eventually. I'm yeah. not sure how to do that. So Army Corps will be back used to be used to be in August. To the river with a backup. Not anymore. No. So. I can feel Kenny scheming for the next piece of equipment he wants. <laughs> no, you don't, they don't want us in the river. No. No, I mean, I think I think what we, we're going to end up doing at some point is renting like a mini excavator, just driving down over the, over the rocks and scooping it out and throwing it out in the river. It's just dirt. I mean, it's just silt. So Are you allowed to do that? See why not. It's a little well done. Have I mean, you met DEC? If you go in there with a shovel, you're going to throw it out. I mean, I, when I first started, I shoveled them damn things all summer. <laughs> yeah. Besides, so lots of stuff. So, so overtime after, after dark. Got it. <laughs> Actually, we had to look for um, groundhogs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because groundhogs can lead to undermining Which some of the infrastructure over there. So, yeah. All right. Um, any questions for Kenny on the sewer report? Um. Keith's last class finishes up when? It was in May. So it's done? Yeah. Uh, when, have you guys scheduled the CERT I, test? I called on in the beginning of June to schedule them. Their systems were down, and they told me to call them back and have it. <laughs> All right. It may be wiser to time that for a better season for, for you since you're double duty with DPW. It may not be an imminent rush to get it done in the summer season. But we can certainly talk about that later. <coughs> I know we've been, we've been wondering. So. And Flores is still going by? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Looking for a motion to approve the sewer department report. Motion. Thank you, Kevin. Second. Thank you, Dan. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? Carries. Uh, water report. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. First off, uh, I printed the, la the wrong report last month, so I reprinted. May's report and June's report. Also, as requested, we have started to get um, monthly billing details when we're selling additional water. Uh, there's two companies right now who are typically doing it. So I've added in the water report um, yet another little graph that just kind of shows how things are. And as we do this from year to year, we can start to see how things are improving. And um, But you can see how many extra gallons we sold and what the revenue was and how it's totaling. So just uh, as, a, as a, uh, another item, and if you guys want to see other things with that, that's fine. It's not, not a big deal. Unless you guys have any questions, looking for a motion to approve the water report. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug. Second. And thank you, Doug. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? All right, it carries. Um, minutes, we have the June 15th regular meeting minutes. Um, I did not make any changes to what I had sent out. Doug, you had... No, we figured we yeah, figured, we figured out. out. Yeah. Okay, so was there something well, you wanted to make sure was in there? The specific piece about Oakman Suey, right? Yeah, that, the first yeah. street site is the Oakman Suey site. Okay. Do you want me to add that in as a no, reference point? No, I just point? want to make sure. Okay, yep. Um, in that case, unless um, that's it, I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes from the July, uh, June 15th regular meeting. All right, thank you, Doug. Dan, you want to second that? Thank yep. you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. Thank you. All right. We've already closed the public hearing, so trustee and committee reports. We don't have to go in alphabetical order, so I'll just start at the end with Kevin and move our way down. So, Kevin O'Malley. Don't have much. Just the summer concerts are underway, thanks to our sponsors for this year. Um, we've gotten two in so far. One rain out the first one, and then... Uh, the first was a huge one, we had a great crowd, and yes. this uh, past one was very well attended as well. Um, next one is this Saturday, and then the weekend after that is uh, oh, nothing going on. But the 29th of July, we have the Blues House Rockers in a car cruising where antique and classic cars can come and hang out and enjoy. Oh, nice. Nice. All right. That's it. Thank you. And you did the sidewalk stuff, too, in the concrete, yeah. so good. Thank you, Kevin. Doug? Uh, just on the New York Forward, um, Mary Ann found out the state don't know when they're going to be reissuing the next round. <laughs> so, it's so helpful. Yeah, they're really helpful. <laughs> uh, so we have a little bit more time. Um, mm -hmm. As we talked about, we have, hopefully we'll have a meeting next week of the, of the planning group. Mm -hmm. 
um, just a couple things that we, that we learned from the winning proposals. We need to tie things in the theme, like accessibility, irrespective of what project we can package them and how we're impacting accessibility. Um, we also, I think, for the village perspective, on the public projects, where we can, we need to get some bids. Uh, it was obvious that those folks that had bids looked shovel ready. Those folks that didn't know didn't. So when we talk about sidewalks, for instance, what sidewalks can we fix that we have control over? We want yeah. to invest in the lighting from Sandbar up to Unihog. There's something we just guessed. We didn't have any bids. So I think on the public side, and, and if the Oak Missouri project is part of that, hopefully, we, we need to be able to start thinking ahead and not be like we were last time. One month, right. we got to find out numbers. Well, yeah, there's no legal issue with us getting bids on something that we're... Okay, good. That's fantastic. Yeah, so actually, from public works and sidewalks, let's, let's think of that. And we're talking a year, year and a half away if we get it. So timing-wise, we would just have to approve as a, a, as a board a motion to put out for bid whatever the project is. We probably want to put something in the bid document so that we can put it as well. Okay. So what's the timetable of real-term energy, if that could be part of the solution Oh, you know, and he's not even here to answer that question. Uh, that I will have to follow up with um, Bobby on that, and I'll try to get that information uh, to you, Doug, uh, as we're as a, for the New York forward uh, grant. The real term energy is um. Yep. I street. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry, Doug. I didn't want to. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, what's that? That's all. All right. Thank you, uh, Deb. Um, I have a few things. Uh, the first is the fourth word playground. We met yesterday. It was so hot. Um, and we looked at everything. Um, and, um, well, we had to do some something about some of the things. Um, a lot of the equipment needs to be repaired or replaced. Some, well, some needs repairing, some needs replacing. Um, there's rotten wood, missing pins. Feel free to chip in, Kenny. It's, it's, it's in rough shape. Yeah. It's, it's just, it hasn't been... Properly maintained over the years. No, it's a sweet little, yeah, there's parts it's, that need to be paid. It was one of those things that was taken on by just really good volunteer residents, and mm -hmm. we slowly tried to take responsibility of it, and yeah. I think um, you've already said you're going to have some guys over the next week. We've yeah. already talked through some plans. I'm sorry, to keep yeah. going. No, that's okay. We, um, uh, we talked about uh, rearranging some of the playground equipment to take advantage of shade and sun, like the metal monkey bars are like right in the, in the sun. Yeah, that's so totally that's, not, that's not a good idea. So moving things around, um, Kenny's going to, and these guys are going to fix what he can. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's some things that you can do. Um, and that'll at least get us going. Um, some of the things we need to consider are, you know, do we tear it all down and start from scratch? Has there been a change in the code? You know, if we start messing with it, do we have to, is there a certain code that we have to pay attention to? Um, are there better, safer, and long-lasting materials out there? Because this is mostly wood, some pressure treated and some of it's not, right? Yeah. Um, um, we can replace only what's necessary. It depends on funding, mostly. Um, we can replace only what's necessary. We can replace all of it, but just do it bit by bit. You know, like just the monkey bars one year and the castle thing another year, um, like that. Um, and the other thing to, to do, which I, I'm going to be looking into, is to hire a playground architect, architectural company, like um, the Kiwanis. Is it Kiwanis? Or yeah, it's Kuwait. Yeah. Um, dig down at the town um, playground. So um, <coughs> I'm going to contact Kevin. You gave me the name of one place. I'm going to contact Park them. Uh, yeah. Park that was a town that did that. Yeah. But the, didn't Kiwanis help you a lot with that? I think they helped with the part of, part of the project is with that thought. I think they paid for a bunch. Well, anyway, whatever it was. just put in huge, beautiful, beautiful. Playground. Who did? Bennington. Oh. Willow Park? Willow. Yeah. Um, and it would just be, I wonder who who did that. I don't know. I'm probably going to find out. Kevin's right, Park Network. Yeah. There's Park Attacks. I don't know if that's who you use. Okay, so I'm sure there's others out there. But they also, I don't know if they do this, but they also, um, maybe they do like, our engineering firms do. They maybe they have a, a few people there who write grants or whatever to get us. Can we reach out to Robert Flores? Yeah. Um, 
So there's all that. There's other things that we need. We need to have cameras. Um, mm -hmm. um, the things that uh, we were considering. Um, the, the swings, the castle in the middle is a mess. Um, benches and sitting areas. We might want to move the swings around a little bit to, so that, well, yeah, I mean, those it's of you who have children, you better this better than I do, but so that like a mother could sit there and there's the baby swings and then the, the older kids swing so she could watch both. Right now it's not set up like that. Yeah. Um, and then the other the other piece uh, is oh, um, and then Rob spoke to Dean Foster the playground furniture at ISA. Those big tall boys don't really need those little things, so maybe they don't. Have to Dean maybe so uh, yeah Dean expressed. Uh, good possibility of us being able to get that from them, so I'll follow up with Dean after this meeting. Okay. Um, see, it's uh, it's the old St. Mary's Academy. Yeah. Playground. Yeah, they, they just put that playground in right before, I think, they closed down. This yep. Playground's fairly new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have to, at some point, um, oh, another thing we talked about is there's possibly a, there's a nice piece of property right next to it, if we could acquire that and attach it to the park. We would have something gorgeous to put over there. To the, we'll you're the about to the left? If yeah. you're looking at... Uh, right on the, on the corner of Munsell and Jackson. Uh, Kelly Street. There's, um... Let me bring that Kelly. up. Kelly, that's right. Just Kelly. So, there's, there's three there's properties that go there? all the way back, oh, and the end of two yeah. of those properties is like a forest <laughs> area that's in between the park and Munsell Street. Um, so we'd have to talk to the two owners to see if they'd be interested. They may not even be interested in that as a possibility. But let me bring that up here and I'll show you. One of them is a property that nobody lives at, hasn't for years. Yeah, Caviano was in Maine. They used to own the property, they used to own the house on the corner. Right uh, the where, where, where? From your house. From the house you, from your house. The one that I do own. Yeah. They used to own on the corner of Munsell and Kelly? Yeah. Yes. So you have the one that I have. Yeah. Our, our, the, she, so the one on the other corner. here is um, the... Uh, Jackson Street Park. This is Munsell Street right here. This is High Street. Uh, I think you can see Dan's house from here. Right there. House. My house from here. Mm -hmm. um, can you see Dan's house? These two properties <laughs> right here, there's a large wooded area here. So if we were interested in expanding, we'd have to talk to the owners and purchase part of this from them, but they would have to agree to it. We'd probably have to do all the legal um, changes to the... Yeah, so it is it is a big ask, uh, and it would be a lot of work and, a, and a, an expense, but it may be a little it may be valuable to do it. There is a little stream that runs through here, which is drainage from I think this area up here and further, and it runs into the storm drain system, which heads down that way. So that would also probably have to be culverted and covered or something like that. But the possibility exists. Anyway, it was just something that came up while we were down there. Yep. it's a it's a pretty sweet piece of the old property. And then we, we talked a little bit about funding. It, I mean, we've got maybe ARPA. Um, we look at the budget. Um, there might be some there from Peg Bacchitis from a while ago. I'm going to ask Denise about that. And then, or maybe find um, a partner to do it with us, like the Lions Club, Kiwanis Club type of mm -hmm. thing. So that's where we're at with that. Did the swings come in yet? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't even. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to know. Deep breaths. You could guess. Anything else, okay. Deb? Yes. Um, you want me to do that? Keep um, going. Okay. Uh, the transfer station. Um, the recommendations will be coming next month um, in terms of the, the town use and the raising of rates for the permits or for the you know each individual bag of trash. Um, we'll get that more information about that and we can make a decision. Um, and if we're going to get money from the town, we need to tell them soon because they're doing their money. Um, uh, one other thing. Oh, the Ed Gorman piece that I sent you. You want me to do that? Elena, do you... Is that... I well, I told Elena you... about it. Well, I'll tell you guys about it. Um, there's a piece of property. Um, do you have a map that I sent you? Yes. I'm assuming this is fine to discuss. Yeah. Okay. Uh... So there's a piece of land. There's, you know where the firehouse is, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a piece of land. It's like dog walking alley. I can yeah. tell you why. There's lots of landlines. Yeah. 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 And um, and then there's that Hasty Three Garden that's now Got it. owned by the Armory. So and then the Armory is going to sell or give that piece of property um, to the blue in the blue. 
Yeah, this is the property. This is the street. This is Trusco over here. This is the parking lot. Armory's down here. It's that spot. No, it's not. I sent you one with red marks on it. It's that little narrow plot between narrow. the firehouse. It's really narrow. It was once supposed to be a st street. It's not this. It, this is no, just a, no, no. That's the Hasty Three or the Armory Garden. It's that land above it. It's just one. That little street right there. Right. Right. Yep, yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, my apologies. But this is the right picture you wanted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So that white, big white roof. That's the firehouse. Okay. And then the the road on the right is the parking lot, and the road on the left is Church Street. That's true. Okay, so that little narrow area, which it's a cut through, people walk through it and they take their dogs through it, and that's where I'm going to stop. Um, so Ed owns the firehouse, and I think he's soon going to own that garden. So it would be a tremendous thing for him to have that piece in between, which nobody cares about except to walk across it. And he's been maintaining it, been mowing it, and all that stuff. So. Um, I spoke to Tiffany McMahon, and that's the new Ted, uh, Ted Rice, and she said, she looked it up and she said it's, um, it's a street. It was supposed to, some, at some point it was a street, or it was supposed to be a street, or whatever. Nobody's really sure. Um, uh, Elena called it a paper street. Um, and mm -hmm. anyway, so he would like us to do what we need to do, abandon it. And then so the village owns he can he can snag it or so the village like, owns it. We think. Well, the county well, tax map shows it as part of the tax map number shows it as part of Trusco's property. It could well the Trusco the, property. Wait, 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 wait. So the the draw that piece of land. If you look where it where there's a driveway, if you yeah. go across the parking lot. And that okay that that parking lot is Trusco. If you go up, up 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 there you go up. So right there is a, a driveway that goes between right. Trusco That's and Kennedy Mahars. Yeah. Yeah. Kennedy yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Kennedy Lane's the next one. That's the driveway next to the funeral home that goes out it's there. Between the few, that's the driveway between the funeral home and uh, Trusco. So that funeral. might be an extension oh, of Elgin yeah. Street. So it might be on somebody else's deed. But there's no deed that exists for, uh, for that alley that we own, we have, or we, that Ed wants. Okay. Am I confusing okay. everybody? Sure. No, we got it. I'm going to bring in a map. Um, Elena, can you give us some uh, more legal context on this um, quagmire of confusion? we got to figure out who well, owns it. Yeah, you Surveyor. need to figure out who owns it. If it was a paper street, then the question would become, was the paper street ever dedicated and accepted by the village, even if the street was not built there? Who maintains it? And if the abutting property owners maintain it and it was never... Um, never dedicated and accepted by the village, then you'd have to look at the deeds of the abutting property owners to see if they own to the center of that or not. But it sounds as if you're going to own both. Perhaps it's a I different mean, parcel. So. so I think the question is, when Deb and I spoke, it sounded as if it was a paper street, a street on paper, but not ever built. Mm -hmm. um, so if that was the case, what I'm explaining would be the process. And perhaps it could be a pretty simple issue because it would sound as if the village didn't own it. If somebody else owns it, then obviously we can't do anything okay. with it. Okay, so in any case, Ed and Elena are going to talk, and because they, they speak that language. Great, thank you. And they can work that out. And then after that, we can, if it does belong to us, we can decide if we're going to okay. go forward with this. Okay, and then one other, uh, oh, Urswama, sorry, I'm being long for that. Um, we need to, ex um, our pickup contract for waste management is running out, so we need to renew that. So I guess can we vote on that tonight, or uh, decide we have on to, it, or do we need to vote on it? Uh, I think we have to. Let me see if I got a copy of it. It's we, we do it typically a one year extension. We've been doing it for a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, it's separate from the two year bidding we got on on Reptives, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. I got an email from from Ed, uh, from Matt. We can do that next time. I'm very fine to just continue to do the 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 year uh, as we go. Every time, okay. So can I call them and just say we're keep go we're keeping going? We'll add it in the August. Uh, add it to the August meeting. Okay. Is that right, Elena? Okay. Yes. Um, and then there's other transfer <sighs> station stuff. Um, we talked about a little bit about um. 
all the transfer station stuff is done through Swana. They do all the bidding and all the, even if, you know, all that sort of stuff. And that's what they do, Carter. So um, we could take some of those things over if we decide to, just to think about for now, and put out our own bids for each different bay or what are they called, pads? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you've, got, you've got construction and demolition debris, you call it CV, then you've got the quid memo, which is the, the paper, the, the cardboard, the tin, the glass, and you've got brush, you've got, you know, um, electronics, you know, the other Right, way. so we'd have to be, one of us would have to bid each one of those things out separately, which could... In my know. opinion, I think the Aeroswama thing is great, it's, it saves us, I mean, we'd have to hire somebody just to do that. Yeah, no, I don't really know that anything. That's a lot of work do we don't have yeah. to do, so we're, in yeah. a sense, paying for the luxury of having someone else take yeah. care of it. Right, and the last time we bid out for um, for the trash, I think it was trash pickup, um, they were the lowest by far. They got us the oh, lowest yeah. bid, like, crazy by far. Yeah. So, um, okay, so I'll tell the network people going forward. And I just wanted to know if any of you guys have noticed that I know it seems like more trucks are coming through the village than ever before. I know they have to come on Route 22. But there was a thing when the um, that recycling center in Wollumsack was open, and there was an agreement that the trucks, if they didn't have to, wouldn't come through the village, but it seems like a lot of them are. So I was wondering, I don't even know how to start to figure that out. I don't know anything about that. What, 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 what that I don't remember about that The whole zoning board remembers it. They promised that they would actually be using the railroad and they would not be driving the I can see where they would have that because it would have gone through that. Yeah. Was it just would have gone through who? It would have gone through the zone. Sound zone. Okay. I don't think they use the railroad anymore. What, um, so somebody explained to me why they don't use the railroad. It has to do with timing and them getting cash immediately versus waiting for a check. Um, mm -hmm. They ship it via railroad, they gotta wait for a check. And there's turnaround time, and if they truck it directly there, they get... Tough it. nuggies, it's our village, it's exactly. getting all that noise. I know. I know. I don't think we have much we can do about anything like that. They're, well, I don't know, because they're overweight, so... They're huge, and they're noisy, and, and they're not they're covered. longer than most of the other ones, they're, and they don't cover all their trucks. So you could kind of report them. I'll tell you what's noisier is the logging trucks. I, I have a side porch on my house, and sometimes I slip on that futon out there. It's I'm telling you, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yep. Brrr, well, yeah, they make oh the noise too, God, but we don't have, we don't have control over that. We can lessen the noise. We, 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 we do have control. Now, we have signs that say you can't use your engine brake in the village. I mean, oh, it ain't. It's not the, oh, no, I know. It's not the no. brakes. Can. It's just the logging trucks. I don't know yeah, if they yeah, just yeah. don't have the right mufflers on them. They're just freaking loud. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's... there's I, I assume there's laws that you know dictate how how loud they can be. That would, I, know, I know that we did put signs up. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't in charge when we did it, but I remember putting the signs Jake up. Jake breaks. The, the yeah. Breaks and stuff weren't allowed in the village. In, a, in any and case, they still use it. I mean, yeah, they do all the time. Yeah, all the time. So. If, but the, the yeah, thing is that, that um, if we can't control those, we can if we can at least find out if we can do something about. The, that would be something with the police department. You could work with the uh, Department of Transportation, maybe. If you get DOT enforcement at. Yeah, because it's, up, it's up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they just have to have a spot to set up where they can pull trucks over. But, um, yeah, I, I'm working on more stuff. For it. Dan offers his front yard for it. It'd be on the sidewalk. Yeah, that's, that's against the curb cut law. It's, 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 it's more than usual, right? It's, it's, it's increasing. Am I crazy? Yeah. I mean, I am, but. No, I. I well, well, if they're not using the railroad, chances are then truck stuff is getting trucked. We had a similar problem once with um, trucks from Canada coming down through because they wanted to avoid paying the tolls on the, on the Northway, so they were coming down. And then we. One time, asked the DOT to come, and they they came and started doing checks, and that, that seemed to rectify that problem. Hmm. If the, so the town zoning board would have um, would have a record of that. They would have passed a, something. Or a, yeah, but the enforcement end of it's going to be a little tricky, you know, no matter what they said. Yeah, no, but I want to just I want to know the background. You know, we no, that would have definitely gone through the uh, zoning. Board. Okay. And who? Who's zoning these days? Oh, what, can I talk to it's still Jim. Holly about that? Jim, oh. Jim sorry. Still okay. Jim. Is it better to talk to Holly or to Jim? Who's the... I'll talk to Jim. Okay. 
Jim's really nice. Okay. Anything else, Dad? You can get some extra to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dan? Just a couple things. Um, we're obviously getting three local laws done tonight, which is great. Um, Fantastic. Should we, I, I know we had talked about doing this and then it kind of fell by the wayside the past few months, but with the, the junk car ordinance going into effect here, hopefully here shortly, um, should we uh, get a contract with Phil, Phil's auto, Phil was here, should we get, I think we could probably just get it, maybe we could just get the copy of the contract from Troy, I, I, I can't imagine we need to do anything differently, right? I mean... Did, I thought we did this. Yeah. Did we do a contract? Yeah. No, we, we have a handshake agreement when he came in here. I, I thought there was a contract. I thought there was a contract. I thought we, we approved something like yeah, that. But did. I will I will. We did for snow removal. I know that we had... Um, for towing vehicles. In the snow, during the snowstorm. With fills? Yeah. No, that was with... Eagle Bridge. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, we were working on the Eagle Bridge one. We went with the, we went with Phil. Phil, because we uh, I mean, he, he provides a copy of Troy's. He provides a copy of, uh, as a, like a, a, a and template. we never acted on that? No, we didn't, so we should probably Dan, get. we'll, we'll, we'll check back on that and, and, and check our records, and if not, that will be uh, in the August meeting. Because we also want the, so much of that money, the towing expense comes back to the village, too. Yep. And then it's a matter of just making sure that the police know who the towing people are that we're in contact with. And, uh, I mean, he can be here in like 20 minutes, apparently. And if He's great. We had one, actually the day after he was here, we had an incident in the parking lot. I think he was there in 15 minutes or something. Yep. And then the guy came out and mouthed off for a bit. I would have towed him anyway, but that's just me. But <laughs> any, anyway. Um, so any the other thing is, as far as local law goes, um, I talked to somebody who... who would definitely know about this. And the, the idea of um, memorializing vehicle and traffic law into village ordinance for the purposes of writing against village ordinance may not be the best idea because the problem is the enforceability. It becomes an issue just like, um, uh, the, I think, the code enforcement stuff, right? The, if you get a bench warrant, it's only enforceable. With it, yeah, and, and that's going to become the problem. You can't you can't tag their license registration, whatever whatever they do in the DMV system or whatever. You can't your enforcement options of tracking them down should they not come through the village again, not be you know whatever, are going to be minimal at best. Uh, so this particular person told me that basically all these things, almost all these things, get reduced to a at whatever the VNT code is twelve oh one a or twenty. What's the parking on the pavement? Is it 1201? What is it? 1201A. 1201A, yeah. 12, okay, I, I, I was right. My memory. I mean, if you bring in the Department of Transportation for junk cars, they might be able to help. They'll definitely help with the trucks because they get about $1,000 a ticket. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Does any of that revenue come back to the village or no? Or is it going to the state? I don't know. i got to look into that, too. Uh, I mean, just because it's a state highway. Yeah. But but, I'm, but as far as like speeding tickets and stop signs, and writing a village ordinance, the, the problem is the infor the, the 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 ability to to um, the recourse is not there. Should they decide to to just say I'm not yeah you know, whatever. So yeah, one of the the couple of years of discussions we've had is frustration that some of the tickets don't really get much back to the village, it all goes to the state. Mm -hmm. And we knew that Troy had their own... Um, they have a local court of, code of ordinances with the state laws and their laws. Right. And copied and pasted them, pretty much. And so all the money that is generated goes back to the city. But now, that, they'll take a ticket for speeding and reduce it to pavement, uh, parking on a pavement, and find them with no points. And people were very happy to hand over their money without getting a point. Right. So that's what we're talking about, but this is kind of the flip side of maybe this isn't the right thing for a bit small village as opposed to a city like Troy yeah. where it would make sense. But that's kind of the conversation we're very glad to invite you in on. And get yeah, I think uh, maybe you and I chat sometime about that because I was, I was advised that, that writing our own village ordinances doesn't provide us with any recourse should they decide to you know, say the cow lose and falls and not come back. So I think we have, we have to dig into that a little more. It may be worth it to have it anyway. And then the officers can kind of make the decision if they want to write it to the village one, uh, especially if it's like repeat offenders who are local. That, you know, it may be beneficial for the officers to have that discretion. 
I, I assume you know, that if we have a vote ordinance, that we have, the officers would have that discretion to write against New York State BNT. Usually they were both. Oh. And then whoever's prosecuting it can choose which one they put to. Oh, well, I like that idea. Then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, well, that solves that problem then. By the way, since we're talking local laws, Here's I, forgot your pile of tickets, sir. I forgot to mention this, but um, I've had a couple concerns about um, the leash law and a couple situations. Uh, we've had a lot of dog-related situations over the past year or two, and one of the things that I had brought up to this individual and I wanted to bring up to you guys in session was I, I want to add reviewing the leash law into the queue of, of local laws we're looking at to possibly upgrade that. Uh, especially in light of the severity of some of the dog attacks that have happened. Um, and that's something else that we need to talk a little bit further about. And we've already talked about trying to appoint a second dog warden so we have the availability of two um, and that sort of thing. But those we are all... have one? We do. Well, we do. Officially? Or? Is it Nancy? Or? Yeah, Nancy's our, our dog warden and she was appointed on a two-year term in the April 22 meeting, so she's on a two-year term, so we can add a second one in and have two, so in case one isn't available, we have the other one, and that's one of the things we'll talk further about um, regarding appointments and organizational stuff after after meeting. Perhaps uh, part of our dog ordinance should be, currently it states that the dog must be on, on a leash or under the person's control, but maybe it should just be on a leash, because I think people... Get a little carried away and let their dogs. Run. I mean, there, there's dogs everywhere in the village. This is a dog owning village. It is, and but here's the thing. First of all, like my dog, I, I keep him on leash, but he he'll jump up on you, mm -hmm. right? And people come in my shop and he'll jump. He'll jump sometimes, but and they'll say, "Oh, it's okay, it's okay." Well, no, it's not okay because what if the person who he's jumping on is old or is afraid of dogs, has a fear of dogs? It's yep. not fair You've never to them. Seen your dog move. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, he's 14. Well, you're dreaming of jumping out. Yeah. He's 14. Give him a break. I've been here a few times. Okay, did you bring food? I know. Guess I, what? I, See? I um, think, oh, sorry. So anyway, I, I, I just want to add this to the queue of things uh, yeah. on the radar. But also, people let them want, oh, they'll be fine. They, you know, they're good with traffic. They always come home. Yeah, but who's the one that they're crapping on? Me? And, and, Mine? and also, if the law ties into it, whatever fines, penalties, punishments could be for various things, I think that would give the officers um, more, no more to be able to enforce. That's, that's the kind of thing mm -hmm. I'm thinking about. So. From a guy that doesn't own dogs, it's really aggravating getting some landmines in front of your house. And, mm -hmm. and, and ever, I get a million dogs a day walking past the house, obviously. You know? I have more dogs around my property. Than Although my daughter mows a lot now, so we have amazing. Cats. Dogs yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah, that, that under their control, that's pretty subjective, isn't it? <laughs> People are varying interpretation, yes, so I, I just wanted to, sorry to sneak into your report there. Um, Especially on the Greenway, where I see people walking their dogs yep. and let them off the leash, and they, I mean, so, <coughs> like Deb said, if somebody's nervous about dogs, then yeah, maybe I won't use the Greenway anymore because there's people who are letting their dogs run. I know people who don't use the Greenway for that reason. Mm -hmm. I know of that, so, yeah. All right, sorry, I just jumped in the No, that, that's, that's it. Uh, Bobby, you know, I'm on the uh, water and sewer uh, thing, but Bobby, you know, De Bobby Decker and I mm -hmm. talked. He's, he's pretty much handling all that, so I'm just there as a backup um, if needed or whatever. So I, you know, or excuse me, highway. Highway, yeah. Highway water. I'm doing the contract and stuff, but, I mean, if you need me, call. Otherwise, Bobby's got that pretty under control, and I just, I just want to focus on doing local laws and just, you know. So it looks like we've got... We need to revisit this. What what exactly do we do for sidewalks, right? That should probably be memorialized well, I mean, in some kind yeah, of. I mean, I mean, I think we can just you know keep continue doing what we're doing, but you know just and just memorialize it yeah, in a yeah, law. Yeah. No, it sounds like a great idea. If we can get more people to do sidewalks, I think we just need to memorialize it and really get it out there and sell it so we can get more sidewalks mm -hmm. done. Um, okay. And coming from the perspective of a guy who. You know, has a, a wife who's you know at day some days wheelchair bound. Um, some of these sidewalks leave a lot to or lack thereof, need a lot to be desired. By the way, somebody maybe you know, somebody asked me who also has some ADA issues. Um, why over in Second Ward the sidewalks end, and then for like two houses there's no sidewalk, not even remnants, and then they start again. I have no idea. Hmm. It's like I people, people have taken them out. 
I think so. No, but some of them, there's like a, a, a hills of there, there was never, you can't, there's not even a remnant of where there. Did you ready for this? Some people didn't put them in. You know my white fence along Munsell Street? Yeah. There was sidewalk there that I did not know existed until I had to dig the posts for it. And, and it was like a foot or two feet, so they just sunk under there, and the road just, the ground got built up. So sometimes it's under there, and you just don't know it. Well, I, I told this person, I said, they probably had a handshake agreement with Walter Wood in 1880 or something. I don't you know. Who knows what yeah, went I mean, on there's it. There's a lot of them that just have never, you know, they, yeah. because it's their property, and you can, you know, they can determine whether there's yep. a sidewalk or not. Okay. Yeah. Anything else there? No. Is there... Do you think there's any chance, or, or is it legal or whatever, if, if some of the guys that do concrete work, if they could, can the, can the village negotiate a rate that the relative, that the residents can piggyback off of in the same way that we buy, like, police cars on state contract? Is, is that something? I, I mean, you, you could. I mean, it, it, you'd have to. I mean, that's, that's beyond my scope of expertise. But, I mean, is that something we could do, Elena, where we have a negotiated rate, residential rate? So... They're, you know, they're giving us a cut, our residents a cut deal, but they're getting quantity. And we can offer that to the residents. If they want to go yeah, elsewhere, they can. Otherwise, yeah. Get whoever you want, but just yeah. so you know, we have Tatra or whoever has offered to do, and then they, you know, they're taking a cut, but they're also maybe getting quantity of business. I don't know. Possibly. I have to look. I'm not familiar with your 50-50 program, so I have to look into it to see what it says. <laughs> or, <laughs> or what what we what what folklore has been handed down through the generations about it since Walter Wood started it himself in 1872. Um, That's all I got. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm just getting the ARPA file up. So old business I had under there. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. Oh, something I wanted to bring up that Bobby Ryan had just uh, mentioned um, about getting the new tree and the new bench. Your meeting, I guess, was um, them over the weekend or something like that? Yeah, it was supposed to be last week. She had, she had a lot of tax. Well. I think okay. we already approved the, the new tree and the bench, so I don't yeah. think we need board <laughs> approval. Just do that, and we're happy to do it and where, where the old tree came down. So, well, probably not right exactly. Not exactly in that spot, yeah. Okay. Well, it's only that deep. It's only gone. He didn't pull the whole thing, but he only went down like three inches forward. Tim, you said American Training Academy was the place we're getting these. Correct. Okay. Green that, Island. Yeah, Green Island. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the latest uh, remaining funds for ARPA. Um, I just added in the HFPD new handguns that we approved. Um, and just as a reminder, we did set aside $50,000 uh, of ARPA funds to do the electric pen replacement, but we're still waiting on a quote to officially do that. But I've still taken that money out of here. So that leaves us, I don't know why it didn't, hold on a minute, it's supposed to be 84. Apparently copy and paste isn't working. There we go. 84,000 uh, remaining. And so with some of the projects we, that we've been talking about, including the uh, police evidence um, uh, hardware, software was something that had been brought up before. Um, I want to kind of, this is a big priority for the August meeting is let's make these final decisions. Um, some of these, like the projects in the municipal building, maybe we try to get that through the New York Forward Grant. Like maybe we try to get the handicap repair the access. Maybe that's a New York Forward Grant. Maybe if yeah. we make changes, substantial changes to the bathrooms, we do that through New York Forward yeah, and not here. under accessibility looks good. Yes. So these are all things I'm working on. I'm sorry, Kevin, you, were, you had to say something. No, I just wanted really, Tim, had seen the list that the police came up with, of the ARPA fund, maybe he has a different perspective on that. Have you seen any of the uh, quotes from, so we had ARPA funds from a couple of years ago that we've been slowly um, chipping away at. Um, previously, they had brought up getting uh, the evidence-based software and hardware that I think is the same thing the sheriff's... Uh, yeah, the beast. Yes. Uh, they had a quote for that. It's old, so it probably needs to be double-checked to make sure it's still accurate. They had brought up the possibility of upgrading some of the downstairs facilities to a more permanent lockup, which would require a few things. Mm -hmm. um, what else am I forgetting? I feel like there was one more thing they were focused on. I may have it in here. Was it the... Uh from the police department, you mean? Was it the... the a new police vehicle. The holding room? A new police vehicle is the one they had talked about. Uh, and body cameras. That was... Uh, these are things that have been discussed a while back. So 
we're trying to get all of our ducks in a row to make a decision on spending these 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 monies um, in the August meeting. So just I want to put this on your radar. We're all trying to gather all of our things here for that. Police car be bought out of ARPA funds? It's equipment, right? We can check. I mean, just with the, the amount of repairs they've been doing over the past couple of years. That... One of the um, NICOM webinars was an updated thing on ARPA. We can grab that too and we'll go through that as well if you want. Where did that ARPA... Um... I was going to say, I haven't seen that. Where did that ARPA paper, or where did that ARPA, the NICOM training paper end up with the highlighter? Right. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> There's the highlighter. I don't see the NICOM training pages. Dan, do you have the NICOM pages? No. Well, they're around here somewhere, so if you find them, send them, uh, send them down to Elena to look over. Anyway, I'll make sure to add that to it so that's Nikon papers. The Nikon training oh, papers. Yeah. Isn't it that one? No, this is Hudson Valley. Perfect. Um, so does that, is, um, anything else you guys want to talk about or stress regarding uh, ARPA or are we ready to move on to new business? All right. Dan, are you really? Oh, we also had uh, for old business. I would have went in on that. Um, discussing uh, discussion regarding Cheney Library's request. Should we build that into the August decision? It makes sense. Okay. Um, Elena, we don't need to table discussing the Cheney Library's request since we're deciding to do that at the next meeting. So I'll just reach out to the library and say we're considering this and other requests at the August meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, in that case, we are at new business. So, is the board interested in adopting some local laws? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get the first local law up. It's swell. I don't... Nothing like opening something and having McAfee ask you some questions. Like, come on. All right. Okay, so we're going to discuss a uh, resolution enacting Local Law 1 of 2023, creating a vacant building registration requirement for the village of Hoosick Falls. I don't need to go through this because it's very self-explanatory. Now, therefore, be it resolved uh, that the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Hoosick Falls does hereby adopt Local 1 of 2023 as follows, and this is a reprint of the entire law that we have posted and so on and so forth. So, I'm going to, uh, do you have that resolution ready to go? Yes. All right. I need a trustee to officially offer it. I do. Thank you, Deb Alter. And a second. Thank you, Dan. I was trying to think of how to mispronounce your last name. I have like six in my head. <laughs> Shui. Shui. There we go. All right. Um, discussion. Any discussion on this? Very grateful for you guys taking this on and doing it. I'm very excited to have this go. So, uh, hearing no other discussion, a roll call vote, please. Okay. Uh, Trustee Alter? Yes. Uh, Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Shuddig? Shuddig? <laughs> no, you had it right. Shuddig. That's Shuddig. it. Shuddig. Shuddig. Yay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Trustee Sauer? Yay. And uh, Mayor Allen? Yes. Okay. With two options. All right. Yes. Passes 5-0. Local law number two, do you guys want to move forward on this resolution? We do. Enacting local law number two of 2023, disallowing the storage of junk vehicles in the village of Hoosick Falls in certain circumstances. Um, this resolution cites the public hearing, which was held this evening, noticed properly. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this village board of trustees of the village of Hoosick Falls does hereby adopt local law number two as follows, and it is printed out yet again. I'm going to skip. Um, need someone to offer the resolution? Motion. Thank you, Kevin. Second. Thank you, Doug. Uh, discussion? All right. Okay. Uh, Trustee Alter? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Shuttig? Yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, Trustee Decker is absent. Uh, Trustee Sauer? Yes. And uh, Mayor Allen? Yes. And Deputy Mayor is All right, passes as well, 5-0. Oh. 
Um, and we have our third local law, a resolution enacting local law three of 2023, establishing a property maintenance code in the village of Guzik Falls. Again, the whereas note that the creation of the proposed local law, the public hearing notice. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this village board of trustees, the village of Guzik Falls, does hereby adopt local law number three of 2023 as follows, and that is the same law posted. Need someone to offer the resolution? I will. Second. Oh, all right. Dan will uh, offer it and Deb will second it. Any okay. further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Alder? Yes. Uh, Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Shedig? Yes. Nice. Uh, Trustee Decker is absent. Trustee Sauer? Yes. Uh, Mayor Allen? Yes. And Deputy Ryan is absent. All right. Deputy Thank Mayor you, guys. Allen. Congratulations. We got three local laws done on the books. Um, so you'll have to follow up with Elena on the process of filing that with okay. the Department of State. And she'll walk you through that. Yet more things to learn. All right. We have already done the unsafe structures resolution. Um, I have a motion that uh, is unrelated to the unsafe structures. I didn't do the indents right there. Um, I received this from uh, our treasurer. Um, we are looking for a motion for myself, the mayor, to sign the application for corrected village tax roll on two properties. This is Gail Leva's property, Bill 669, from 726.49 and Samuel Swanson, Bill 1113, from 1223.63 to 809.99. Why were they wrong? Um, I'm going to bring that email up because she gave me all the information and I said that makes sense and now I forgot. Mm -hmm. Um, just a minute here. Um, Leva had an outstanding invoice which was sent to Rensselaer County to be relevied, um, but we accepted payment on the invoice in the office in May. This res resulted in what, is the, what would have been overpayment, which is why the request is that the 362 be omitted from the tax bill, and I have the documents if you want to see them. The other property... Um, all water, sewer, and refuse bills were paid. However, the e-check payment was not transferred over and did not post in the water software, therefore, put, therefore putting a relevy on the tax bill that should not have been there. Which that probably makes sense to you now. Yes. It, oh, look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, I need a second on that motion. Second. All right. Dan and Deb. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? All right. Carries. This uh, next one is very long and wordy, but actually very simple. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll do this one first. Sorry. Um, we have a, um, I'm looking for the authority to sign a grant extension letter. This is the, um, wow. 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 All right. Um, from, um, this is a green, North, the North Trail Greenway extension letter so we can finish off the contract. We do have it here. Just looking for a, mo a motion to uh, get the authority from you guys to sign this extension letter so we can finish off the grants. It's pretty simple. Thank you, Doug. I need a second? Second. Thank you, Dan. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. This is the one that was very long and wordy. We had a situation where we had to post something specific to the um, seven million dollar water system improvement um, ban. That again, just to reiterate, we're not definitively doing this. This is something that we had to do to qualify us for grants, and we will have lots of choices later as to what we go through and how much we go through and the scope of the project all based on the grants that we're going for. Those grant applications, by the way, I spoke with Robert Flores in Delaware and he's going to get them in at the end of the month because they're due around the end of the month or early August. I think it's the end of the month. He's getting them done before vacation. But uh, there is a noticing requirement that we almost missed because of the way the East of Press timing is and our meeting got moved a day later and their due date got moved a day earlier. So we talked to our bond council and he was just asking us to do this motion to make sure that all is copacetic and everything is happy. So that being said, I'm looking for that motion that basically just says we use the Eagle um, newspaper to fit the required deadline and that is okay. Looking for it so moved. Motion. Thank you, Kevin. 
Need a second? Second. Uh, all right. I just threw a whole bunch of information at you guys. Does that make sense? We have a notice requirement that we, if we had gone with our normal ESO press, we wouldn't have hit, and that's why we had to do it this so way. This is going to be for those circumstances, right? Yeah, it's just for those circumstances, yeah. Don't we have a backup paper anyway? We have in the past, and with our, we've been putting off the organizational meeting. That's something I want to talk to you guys about in email or an executive session about how to approach that. In the past, there was a year we switched from the Eastwick to the Eagle, and then we switched back to the Eastwick, and there was a year that we had two but we can make that decision uh, in August. And I want to talk to you guys about that a little bit deeper. Does the free press do, do that? We are not. <clears throat> uh, we do not have an official office in Rensselaer County, so we're not allowed to do that, particularly LLCs, mm -hmm. at least not yet. If that were to change, I'll let you know. But I, I will say that our office has been very pleased with uh, the Eagle and getting things quickly published even sometimes a day or two before and when we moved our meeting to Wednesday and the Eastwick moved their deadline back a day it made everything all screwed up so I think there's a possibility of switching or having both of them but we'll talk about that in, in terms of August. And I have nothing to do with the Eastwick anymore. I, it's not mm -hmm. my I know that. I didn't know. <laughs> oh you know who you're working with? Free Press. Free Press. All right. Oh. Um, so we have the motion still. Uh, um, I think it was Kevin and Deb. Mm -hmm. Any further questions discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Uh, we forgot to do this when we um, appointed uh, Clarissa Mango as village clerk. I'm looking for a motion to also appoint the village clerk as the registrar. We should yeah. talk about that for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think no, so. All right. Um, uh, I need a second on that? I'll second. All right. Um, should we make her do a roll call vote so she can uh, come <laughs> with a new? No, all right. All right. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. Um, I'm looking for a motion that is approving the payout of three weeks of unused vacation time from the 2023-23 fiscal year for our water operator Jim Herbert, and this would be retroactive to June 26th, 2023. I'll move. Thank you, Dan. Need a second? I'll be the official seconder for tonight. Official, fantastic. I did. I did. Oh yeah. Um, any uh, discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? All right. Carries. Uh, another retroactive thing that we had to do just because of the timing and we couldn't get a special meeting together at the end of June. Uh, we have a motion uh, approving the hiring of Richie Stifter, Sam Fowler, Carson Holbrook, and Bradley Senecal as our part-time DPW summer workers. This will be retroactive to Friday, June 23rd. We did do this, discuss this over email. We're just putting it on the record officially retroactive at this point. I'm looking for that motion. I'll do it. Deb and second. I think Deb's actually second tonight. Maybe I should go first. Dan is a second. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Carried. And unfortunately, one of those workers did great work for a few weeks and then realized he had too much. So. He uh, spoke with Kenny and sent me a nice email asking to uh, resign because he's got too many things going on. So I'm looking for a motion to accept the resignation of our part-time DPW summer worker, Richie Stiffer. That will be effective today. Motion. Oh, look at that. Working too hard? No, he's only working half a day. He's got, a, he's got another job in summer sports and stuff. Yeah. Need a second on this? Kevin, I know you want to second this. Second. Yes! <laughs> all right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? All right. Carries. Okay. Um, in terms of the water supply development, just a quick recap, and you can sneak into this if you want to. Uh, we had an agreement with... Was it was aimed at It was. Unless Mark wants to jump in. I was wondering why I was sitting here all this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the agreement with the companies that um, provided an escrow account so that if there are costs that the village or the village's attorneys or environmental firms are doing as part of um, our work to oversee, look at, verify plans, procedures, things going on with the alternate water supply as part of uh, um, the, the installation of the water uh, supply and all of the steps that have to happen. We have an escrow account and through a resolution each time this comes up, when bills come in, um, I think it's you are the escrow account manager, correct? I, our firm. The firm is. Has the escrow account. Let me explain. 
the agreement we had with the companies, and it's in place, and it's been incorporated into the TEC consent order, provides that the village has the opportunity to review, comment on, and be consulted on all the plans as they are developed for the new water system. There was, we've gone through what's called the 30% stage of the plans. Uh, Sterling Environmental was deeply involved in the whole process of developing those plans. They put in quite a bit of time. Uh, the issue that has arisen, and we'll talk about this in executive session, that resulted in our law firm getting involved has to do with acquiring the property interests needed for the wells and the river crossing for the new water line. <clears throat> so we've had a little bit of time in it as well. Sterling's time goes back over a number of months and uh, I really need to get this thing passed and frankly walk out of here with a lot of resolution. Yeah, we're gonna so, give him the hard copy of the resolution and he'll scan it and okay. send it to us tomorrow. So I can uh, that's, that's document that's this to the, 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 the last resolution okay. and yeah. get uh, Sterling paid because we want to keep we want to keep our consultants happy and there will be more work and to proceed. Just to reiterate, this is not village funds, this is money that the companies made available to us through the escrow account, so when expenses come it gets Take it out of there. Part, part of the, not falling on the village. Part of the agreement we cut with the companies under which they would undertake this new water system development was funding this escrow account. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of money in there. And this is the first uh, set of invoices that will avail them, which will draw from that escrow. Okay. So that's the deal. So this is the resolution. Uh, authorizing the payment of invoices through a third-party funded <coughs> escrow account pertaining to the development of the new water supply wells and associated infrastructure for the village. We've talked through all the whereas statements already, um, so now I'm going to go to the now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Village of default in regular session to the convenience as follows, that this Board of Trustees does hereby authorize the payment of invoices from Sterling Environmental and PC in the amount of $10,897.45 and Gilchrist Tingley PC in the amount of 2484 to be paid from the escrow account funded by St. Gobain and Honeywell as provided for in the agreement authorized by the parties and approved by the Village Board of Trustees on May 10th, 2023. This will become a standard form that we do whenever these bills come up, but this is our first time going through it. I need someone to offer this resolution. Hello. Trustee Sauer. And a second. Second. Thank you, Trustee O'Malley. Uh, further discussion? Roll call vote. Okay. Uh, Trustee Shude? Yay. <laughs> uh, Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Uh, Trustee Alter? Yep. Trustee Decker is absent. Trustee Sauer? Yes. And uh, Deputy R Mayor Ryan is absent. Mm -hmm. So Mayor Allen? Yes. And it passes. Perfect. All right. We'll get that to you before... Uh, before we're done here. Um, I think that is it. Is there anything else the board wants to bring up? Oh, yes. Um, Trust Kenny, uh, Kenny, we put in the budget uh, money for a new riding mower down at the wastewater treatment plant. We have three quotes for it. Does he need approval from the board? 3,300, 3,500? Okay. All right, what was the lowest quote? The lowest quote was $2,400, and for $1,000 more I got, I can get the same mower, but it's a lot heavier duty to last a lot longer. Okay. And I had, you guys gave me, I, I put $5,000 in the budget for the... Did you see tractor? Nope, it's um, MX and Melrose. So what we'll do is in the motion, we'll just note that the we're not choosing the lowest because we're going up to something that's more heavy duty, will last longer and last longer. Um, so, uh, what what was the final purchase <coughs> price on this one that you're asking for? It was thirty five oh nine. And change. who's the company? Emmer Sales and Service in Melrose. All right. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the purchase of a tractor for thirty five oh nine from Emmer Tractor for the sewer plant. And for the record, to be noted that a this is money that was already budgeted, and b we're not going with the lowest um, bid of 2400 but we're going for something that's going to be heavy duty and be able to do more. Yeah, 
Why don't you get me that? Um, and then, um, unless you guys have anything else to bring in, um, I do want to mention that I'm adding to the executive session notice that's in the agenda. We have it as a motion to discuss current and or pending litigation and receive advice from counsel. I'm also adding an in a personnel matter. Um, and that's the blue number. I'll have you in there. So, so that's all. One thunder. Do you have the number? Yeah, it's 39 or 3509. 69. 69. Thank you. All right, I need to uh, so moved on that motion. Thank you, uh, Doug. And Dan, are you seconding that? Yep. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Carries. Kevin, do you have something? No, before we finish, I was just wondering how we go about crafting a, a letter for our new law about sending letters to the, uh, the vacant property owners. Do we have something that we have in mind or? Oh, like what the actual letter is going to look like? Yeah. Here's a good point. You mean for putting them on notice that they're? Yeah. I'll work with Mark to do I have template notices that I'm going to use. So do you want to be involved in just reviewing that? No, I just was curious whether, you know, okay. what the process was and how it happens and what it looks like. Yeah, we haven't really had a chance to talk about that, but yeah. I have stuff that we've utilized in other municipalities. That okay. Have. Can you send the first one to my neighbor? <laughs> I don't think personal requests is built into the law, but all right. Um, okay, um, looking for a motion to enter executive session to discuss current and or pending litigation, receive advice from counsel, and a personnel matter with no business to be conducted at the conclusion of executive session. Deb? Second, Dan? Yep. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Motion carries. We are moving into executive session at 8.13 p.m.